Welcome everyone. In this lecture, we are going to learn about comparison operators in Python. Comparison operators in Python. In Python, comparison operators are used to compare the values of two objects and return a boolean. Boolean, remember, it's true or false value, indicating whether the comparison is true or false. Here are the comparison operators in Python along with some examples. So the first one is the equal, equal to. And here note that we have double equal signs, double equal signs, not one. And we'll talk about it, why that, why is that? Equal to, this operator returns a true if the values on either side of it are equal. And false if they are not. For example, see, we have here in x equals 10, y equals 20, and z equals 10. Now if I say x, equal equal y x equals y is 10 equals 20 no that's false so the output will be false and if we want to check x equals z 10 equals 10 and the value will be true so if i run this code i will have false and true as output now i told you we need double equal signs because if i say here if i copy this print x equal equal y if i say x equal y we'll run this code and there will be an error here python will think that x equal y that there is a variable called x and a variable called y and you are trying to assign x to equal y now if i remove print just to now if i say x equals y i run this code and okay now Python say okay you assigned x equals y you assigned x equal y but you did not check for anything now let me just make these as comments I run the code again and if I return x I call for x run the code and x equals 20 now why because I said I told Python now x equals y and y equals 20 so x has been changed now which we don't want we don't want right now let me remove these things and remove the comments from here just be careful when you want to check double equal sign the second operator sign is not equal to not equal to and we use it with one equal sign and before it exclamation mark this operator returns a true if the values on either side of it are not equal not equal and false if they are equal so basically it's opposite of the equal x equals 10 y equals 20 and z equals 10 print x doesn't equal y x doesn't equal y that's correct so it will be true and x doesn't equal z x and z they are equal so there if you are saying x doesn't equal z that's false statement run the code and you have true and false next sign is greater than greater than and this is the sign greater than this operator returns true if the value on the left side is greater than the value on the right side if you have basic mathematics this should be straightforward for example i have x y z values if i say okay x greater than y x greater than y that's false because it's smaller y greater than x that's true x greater than z that's false because they are equal okay then if i go to the next one the opposite of a greater than is less than and obviously this operator returns it true if the value on the left side is less than the value on the right side and false if it's not for example i have these values for x y z x is less than y x less than y yes that's true 10 is less than 20 so it will return true y less than x that's false x less than z that's false as well next we have a combination greater than or equal greater than or equal to this operator returns the true if the value on the left side is greater than or equal to the value on the right side and false if it's not example x equals 10 y equals 20 z equals 10 print now x greater than or equal than y is 10 greater than or equal 20 that's false y greater than x 20 greater than or equal to 10 yes that's true is greater than or 
or so it's a greater 20 is a greater than 10 so that's a true statement and x greater than or equals it 10 greater than or equal to 10 yes 10 equals 10 so that's also true statement so false true true next one is less than or equal which is the opposite of a greater than or equal this operator returns true if the value on the left side is less than or equal to the value on the right side and false if it's not for example x equals 10 y equals 20 z equals z equals 10 now is x less than or equal y 10 less than or equal to 20 that's true it's less than y less than or equal to x 20 is not less than 10 and it's not equal to 10 so it's false x less than or equal to z so 10 is it less than 10 no but x which is 10 is equal to z which is 10 as well so this is a true statement so it's a true statement now one thing here i would like to show you let me make these comments and now if i say it's not only numbers i can say for example strings i can say let's say hello is hello equals to hi if i run the code it's false statement because hello doesn't doesn't equal hi it equals hello and if i say run now hello equals hello it's exactly the same and be careful because python takes into consideration the upper or lower cases hello doesn't equal hello because the h here is capital also python considers the type of the data of the object so this is a string two does it equal two as integer and the answer is false because they are not the same type even the value is the same but the type is different this is a string and this is integer so this is a comparison these are the comparison operators so far in the next lecture we are going to see a combination combination more logical operators more logic operations using the operators and combination of them greater than and equal for example greater than and not equal and so on so we'll see this in more details in the next video thank you very much and keep going very good job welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn a little bit more about logical operators about operators in python and now combining the operators larger than smaller than equal signs and other operators combine them chain them together to make more logical operators let's see what does it mean in python logical operators are used to perform logical operations on the values of two objects and retain a boolean value indicating the result of the operation and here are the logical operators in python along, along with some examples okay now this is a th theory let's see practically with examples what does it mean we have three logical operators mainly one is and the other one is or and the last is not and as the name suggests this operator returns the true if both of the values on either side of it true and false otherwise what does it mean so first of all one equals one this is true value right and then i have two equals two if i run this code this is also true now for this imagine that for any reason i want to combine these two together so if i say one equals one and two equals two so what does it mean here first of all note that and this is a reserved word in python and you can check this by the color the color of the word changed automatically right so and so what does it mean the values on the left must be true and the values on the right must be true in order to give me a true result so both values need to be true to give me true value otherwise if either of the values on the left or the right is false then it will be false so because one equals one and two equals two then it returns true value if i change this one to two equals three now if i run this code it should give me false yes and if i return it to and change something here let's say this is five also this will be false 
and finally if I change both sides this is mine both of them false then also it will give false so remember both sides must be true the next one is or this operator returns true if at least one of the values on either side of it is it true one of the values on either side is it true and false otherwise so see examples one equals one and two equals two one equals one and two equals two now this is a true statement so it will be true now I want to check for or one equals one or two equals two so this is true true now what happens if I make like this one equals nine Python will check say no this is false statement or two equals two so one at least is a true either side of it at least one of the values at least one of the values on either side this side or this side is a true so because two equals two this is one value true I don't care about the left even if the left is false it will give me true okay what happens if both of them are false now in this case and only in this case it will be false because because both sides are false and the last one is not not this operator retains the opposite of the value on the right side of it the opposite of the value let's see how it works so we know one equals one if I run this code it's a true now if I say here not see it says this operator retains the opposite of the value on the right the value on the right is it true correct is true now the opposite is false so now it give me false so what does it do only it gives you the opposite of whatever is the original result if I say for example string a and here equals string G now this is and let me make this as a comment so we don't confuse ourselves now if I run this one it will give me false now if I add not at the beginning what happens it will give me true because it's the opposite okay it just gives you the opposite of whatever the result now you can add parentheses if you want doesn't change anything it's just to make it more if you want organized or more visible it's up to you it doesn't make any difference it will be the same so to summarize we have three logical operators and or and not and both sides must be true to give you true or either or at least one should be true and not gives you the opposite of the value okay great keep going and i'll see you in the next video for some exercises and quizzes thank you very much welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about the control flow and mainly the f elif and else statements in python this is very important lecture and we are going to see many examples so this is start the journey in python if statements are used if statements are used to perform different actions based on whether a certain condition is true or false if statement must always be followed by a condition this is the first thing we need to know if statements must always be followed by a condition which is a boolean this condition is a boolean what does boolean may mean it means either true or false true or false the condition is followed by a colon this is the syntax we'll talk about it and the code block that will be executed if the condition is true must be indented indented we are going to talk about it but it means spaced given a space we'll talk about it the general syntax for an if statement is now this is the this is the translation of the above three lines if followed by a condition now this condition is a boolean either true or false now what will what will happen if this condition is a true a code will be executed a code will be executed if the condition is true okay you can also use lf so this is about f if there's if a condition is true a code will be executed for example if the weather is hot print 
it's too hot outside for example off or if temperature greater than 40 print it's too hot outside we'll see it this is number one f number two lf you can also use lf which stands for else f to include additional conditions lf blocks are optional and can be added after an if statement like this if condition one code to be executed if condition one is true so if this condition number one is true there will be a code to be executed now else if what happen if this code if this condition number one if condition number one is not true it's false what happens now here comes elif else if condition two this there will be a code to be executed if condition one is false and conditional two is true again so we have if condition one if condition one is true code here below the if statement will be executed if condition one is false then we need to look at condition two is condition two true then the code will be executed is below the elif you can have as many elif blocks as you like but they must come after the initial if statement and before the optional else block so this is if this is elif and don't worry we are going to see many examples the else block is also optional and comes at the end of an if statement it's used it's used to specify a block of code to be executed if all the conditions above above it are false so how does it look if a condition condition number one if it's a true then there will be a code executed here if it's not true it's false then elif condition two and if condition two is a true there will be a code executed here then what happens if the condition two is false as well then we go to else so if condition one elif condition two then else code to be executed if condition one and condition two are both false okay now let's see some examples here is an example of an if statement with an elif and else block for example this i did identified x equals 10 y equals 5 if x is greater than y then print x is greater than y elif x is smaller than y then print x is less than y else print x is equal to y now let's break it down x equals 10 y equals 5 first if statement if x is larger than y is this true or false is 10 larger than 5 yes it's greater than 5 so this is the code will be executed print x is greater than y so this code print x is greater than y this will be executed this will be executed why is that because the condition above it x larger or greater than y is true 10 is greater than 5 this is print and the output should be x is greater than y now what happens once any condition is met x is greater than y this is met python will not run the remaining of the code let's see the output and x is greater than y which is the first one x is greater than y what happens here this line elif x is less than y and else was not executed okay now let me change let me say for example x equal 2 now x take a few seconds and guess what will be the output x equals 2 y equals 5 so python will run the code from the top if x is greater than y so 2 greater than 5 this is how python will think is 2 greater than y than 5 the, it's false no it's not so if this is false don't then what will happen this line will not be executed and python will jump to elif elif else if x is less than y is 2 less than 5 yes it's a true so this code will be executed and the output will be x is less than y and then the last line will be skipped let's run the code now and the answer x is less than y now let me make them equal 5 5 and run the code and as you can expect the output will be print or x is equal to y x is equal to y 
on the code x is equal to y okay perfect so let's look at it again i have x equal 5 x y equal 5 i have first condition is it met then run, run this code execute this code not not true it's false then jump to lf true run this code the code below it false jump to else and execute the code under else a few notes here you have f then condition the condition here is x greater than y then colon very important very important see what happens if i remove the colon there will be an error and the error is invalid syntax because python say this doesn't look right so we need the columns okay print x is greater than y this is the first thing so i have f condition then a code condition and code condition and code after lf else else has no condition because else means if everything all the conditions above else are false then execute this code there there is no need for a code there is no need for a condition after else because it means else means all the conditions above me are false so that's why i will print this code x is x is equal to y okay this is very important so again colons are important f has colon after the condition lf has a colon after the condition else has a colon after it there is no condition this is number one number two you need to pay attention for this space see this is called indentation this is what we explained at the beginning here will be executed if the condition is true must be indented indented means there must be space so after each f after f when you go to the next line there must be indentation a space and usually the space is four spaces four spaces see this is one two three four it's not a must there is no problem you can make them three no problem but consistent after lf also need to be the same one two three four after else one two three four you can make them all three all one or two doesn't matter five ten but usually they are four okay the same indentation after f indentation after lf and indentation after else why is that because now this is how python will understand that this print statement this code belongs to the f and this code belongs to the lf and this code belongs to else okay because it comes under it then we go to the line here see f and lf and else they are on the same line and the print 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 they are on the same line very important also so here if i remove this indentation see what happens expected an indented block this is a block the elf is called a block so python says i expect a block here what happens i expect indentation what happened okay so we need to keep the indentation what else what other errors we might face so the colons very important the indentation very important okay another example just to make the idea clear let's take this code temperature equals 30 now if temperature the code says if temperature is greater than 40 print it's hot outside lf temperature greater than 30 print it's warm outside else print it's cool outside okay now what do you think the output of this one i'll give you a minute think about it and tell me what you think the code output will be you can pause the video i will run the code and the output is it's cool outside because is the temperature greater than 40 no is the temperature greater than 30 no it's it equals 30 so what happens here the else statement will be executed it's cool outside let me change this temperature to let's say 50 and what do you think now will happen which statement will be executed it's hot outside yes because 50 greater than 40 what if i make it 31 it's warm outside it's greater than 30 right because it's greater than 30. now you might ask okay when you made it 50 here you made it 50 
yes it's greater than 40 but also it's greater than 30 so why python executed the first line not the second line because both statements are true and this is a good question the reason is python goes from the top to the bottom if the first condition is met he skips the rest of the statements he will skip the rest of the statements so python will not execute this will not run will not run, will not run the elif and will not run the else so the first condition met that will be executed and that's it okay perfect let's move to the next part it's important to note that the elif and else blocks are optional optional you can use just an if statement if you only need to check for one condition like this example temperature equals 25 if temperature is greater than 40 print it's hot outside so 25 is not greater than 40 so there should be nothing no output because there is no condition that have been met if I change it to 55 now the output will be it's hot outside okay but the point is it's enough to have only one if without elif without else no problem okay more in Python indentation is used to indicate which lines of code belong to the same block so this is called a block if and the print these two lines are one block one block they belong to each other's okay blocks of code are used to group related statements and define the scope of variables define the scope of variables okay indentation is done using white spaces characters usually spaces or tabs the number of white space characters used for indentation is not important not important however it, was, it must con be consistent within a block of code must be consistent it's common to use four spaces for each level of indentation okay now see the example x equal 10 y equal 5 if x is larger or greater than y print x is greater than y and print this line is also part of the code block so this is one code block so the indentation see under the f there is indentation for the first line and the second line run the code and everything is okay if i remove the indentation from here there will be a wrong an indent doesn't match any outer indentation level it doesn't match anything it should be matching this one so what if we remove also this is okay why because python here is okay he says this is important because if x is greater than y print x okay it's printed then this print doesn't belong to this block okay this is independent now this print is independent it doesn't belong to the f x greater than y so we have these two lines belong to each other's because there is indentation under the f see there is indentation for the print the first print which means it belongs to the f then there is no indentation for the print so it means it doesn't belong to the f it's equal to the f okay it's equal to the f it doesn't belong to it and if you want to make sure i can just make these comments these as comments see and i can run the code only by having the print and the answer b this line is also part of the code block it's part of it when it was like this huh? when it was indented but now it's not indented it's just separate independent okay let me remove the comments this is important what i advise you is to take the code and add indentation remove indentation to understand so now these are the same the same indentation for the two prints and they belong to the f okay once you remove the indentation it doesn't belong to the f anymore so a lot of information here take your time practice it try to write a code from your side you can find this notebook in the github let me know if you have any question in the q and a and i'll see you in the next video with more exercises thank you hello everyone in this lecture we are going to learn about the for loops in python this is very important lecture and here things will get more technical and more makes sense let's say and you will see and let's say you will have more skills more ability to write more complex programs so
let's jump in and start learning about the for loops in Python. In Python, for loop allows you to iterate over a sequence of elements such as a list or string. Let's look at the below example and note the code inside the loop is how it's executed once for each element in the sequence. Okay, let's see what does it mean. Numbers, this is a list called numbers and it has one, two, three, four, five inside it. Now I'm saying for num in numbers, so for each number in this list, print num. So I give it a variable here. For this variable num inside my list, go one by one and print that number. Let's see what the output will be. Printed all the numbers inside my list one two three four five so this num where did I get it from it doesn't matter you can write anything you want I can make it X as long it is the same here X X the same output see I have a list I say for each item inside my list which which is called numbers print that item I can call it whatever I want I can make it GH 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 doesn't matter as long it is the same the output will be the same so every time for every item inside my list numbers print that item okay but since you have this flexibility in the naming give it a name that indicates the type of elements inside your list so it makes more sense when you read your code in the future or someone reads it okay perfect this is the first example we need to look at the syntax you have a list then for the for loop this is our lesson today you have four num in this is also built in word in python numbers numbers is my list print num and look at the indentation it means this print line uh, belongs to the for loop okay belongs to the for loop okay another example numbers this one two three four five for example in numbers print example this is the same idea I said the name or the variable here doesn't matter what is it example num item anything and here you will see the output is the same numbers one two three four five again you can you have a flexibility you are here what what are you saying here for item for each item in my list here for each item in my list which is called numbers print hello don't print the same number don't print the item no print hello see the outcome what do you expect the outcome will be it will be hello five times because I have five times of num I hello for one hello for two hello for three four and five hello 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 five times right because I have five num if I add one element doesn't matter what is it eight it will add one more hello because I'm printing hello every time okay I'm printing hello every time look at the indentation look at the colon after the for very important okay example of using a for loop with an if statement let's make it a little bit more complex if I'm going fast pause the video re-listen to the first two examples and then come back so now let's see let's, ma uh, let's mix things up let's have the if statement with the for loop the, the example says iterate over a list and printing only even numbers I want to print only the even numbers I have a list called numbers and it's 1 2 3 till 10 and I want to create a for loop with if statement that prints only the even numbers so I want to go over each element each number inside my list and check if this number is even I will print it otherwise I will not print so my for loop says for num or item inside my list which is called numbers now check if this number mod 2 equals 0 print that number what does it mean this is very famous condition num mod 2 equals 0 to check if the number is even it says if the number mod 2 the remaining after this division is zero because when you divide any even number over two the remaining is zero four over two two and the remaining is zero ten over two five and the remain remaining is zero 
so this is how we check for even numbers this is very important you need to remember it and understand it so if the number mod 2 equals 0 then print the number so let's print the output and the output is 2 4 6 8 10 let me put here elif or let's make it simple else and print what can we print we can print odd number and let's run this code and see what happens what, how does it work the for loop will start with number one we'll check is it even no so i will go to the else print odd number printed odd number number two two mod two equals zero so this is a true then i will print the number the number is two and the same will iterate over each element of this list i can add numbers here let's say six seven this number i don't know odd or even print and it's odd number okay odd number so this is how you check and how we mix f with for loop a little bit more complex and this this is this is how we build programs right we mix different elements of python together for loops if statements later on when we learn the while loop and other functions classes and other parts of python this is how we can build more complex programs and practical applications so for now let's stick to these relatively basic examples we'll move to the next one now we learned how to iterate over over what over a list now let's go and iterate over a string a string is sequence of characters right so iterating over a string and printing each character a string equals hello simple the same for character in a string print character the same concept and all the characters will be printed again this can be anything for item and string bring what print item always need to be the same right hello hello anything now if you want to print I don't want to print item I want to print let's say nice you don't have to print the items or the letters I can print anything I'm telling Python go over each letter and whenever you go over a letter print nice so let's see what happens here nice 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 and there is something you will see it often instead of writing a variable just write this underscore and this is common in Python especially when you go more advanced this is very important as well iterating over a list so we iterated over a list uh, over a string over a list so here we saw this is over a list right let's see another example iterating over a list and printing each element one two three four five if I print it we know this is simple make sure you understand it look at the indentation look at the columns after the for loop all good then iterating over a tuple iterating over a tuple and printing each element my tuple one two three four five if you remember with parentheses, parentheses for element in my tuple print element the syntax always the same the syntax always the same okay one two three four five one two three four five now iterating over a list of tuples and unpacking the values into separate variables why i'm putting this one because it's important and you will see it often in more complex programs so I have points this is the name of a list see it's a list with square brackets and then you have tuples inside you have tuples one two three four tuples inside what I'm saying here for item in points for each item in my list called points print the item and it will be a, a one two three four tuples one two three four five six seven eight all these tuples right for these tuples now let me jump here I'll come back to the dictionary but I want to see I want to see if I can unpack can I take only one two one three five seven for example I don't want one two together three four together five six together seven eight together I want to unpack the one alone three alone five alone we can do that let me copy this code I will add it I'll add a code here this is my code now 
of course the output of this one is the same now I want to unpack between the brackets so what I will say instead of item I will mimic the, st the structure of the tuple so I have two items inside the tuple so I'll say X and Y and then I will tell Python print me X and Y okay it makes sense think about it logically so you have X Y one two without the brackets now imagine I want only the X's only the first numbers then I can remove the Y like this and that's wrong because this tells so what I need to do X Y print X I will need to keep Y sorry and now this is correct now this is correct because if I keep I remove X okay Python will say for each item inside my list print that item the item is the tuple itself so here I don't need to print the item I need to print first I need to tell Python that for each pair X and Y 1 and 2 X and Y 3 and 4 X and Y 5 and 6 X and Y 7 and 8 print only the X so I need to tell Python first my X and Y are the tuple 1 and 2 okay then print only X if I want to, to print 2 4 6 and 8 what I will do I will print the Y's correct and again the names here doesn't matter as long there is a consi consistency Z Z okay perfect so this is the best way to learn play with the variables change the names and see what you will get okay the last part is iteration or iterating over a dictionary by default this is important when you iterate over a dictionary using a for loop you are only looping over the keys of the dictionary you remember the dictionaries are consisting of keys and values pair of keys and values so here is an example my dictionary a1 b2 c3 for key in my dictionary print key and this key is just the name it can be item okay it's better to write it here and see the output item let's run the code it will give me only the keys a b c and if I keep it key also it will be the same key okay this is only a variable name now if you want to access both the keys and the values of a dictionary while iterating you can use the items method if you remember when we studied dictionaries we introduced the items method to print the key and the values and how does it work I have the same dictionary for key and value in my dictionary dot items print key and value okay so I'm telling Python I have key and value a and one B and two C and three then I will introduce in my dictionary dot items because I want the items print the key and the value let's see the output of this a1 b2 c3 okay all of them now you can change this key and value to x and y key and value x and y must be the same okay very important you want to print only the value remove the key is it true shall I remove the key or no Shall I remove the key on both or keep key here and print only the value? What do you think? I think like this it will give me the same a1 b2 let's see Exactly a1 b2 c3 because now I am telling it is it's just a variable name item value key x y number anything but I need to tell Python that my this is a dictionary and has two items key and value what shall you print is only the values okay so one two three okay I can change this one and print the key ABC what if what if I reverse this one value and key what do you think will happen and print the key then it will print the one two three which is the value okay one two three because for Python value and key these are not the built-in names these are not the built-in names these are variables you are identifying them very important to understand this very important to understand this so let me keep them key and value so I will not confuse you print key and it's ABC okay there is a lot let's summarize because this is kind of intense lesson 
I have first of all the for loop we identified it the syntax for then item in my list print that item which we called it here num okay and make sure the indentation the print belongs to the for so there is indentation and then I have I have colon after the for the for numbers for example in numbers print example so here doesn't matter what you call it example num item anything but the best something relates to the content the items inside your list then I can also print anything I don't have to print the items so we learn that then we introduce if statement inside the for loop we mix then iterating over a string iterating over a list iterating over a tuple and how to unpack the tuple then iterating over a dictionary okay very important lesson please take your time study it and we will see more examples and in practice very good thank you very much keep going and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lecture we are going to do some practice for the for loops in python it's important to practice the more you practice the better you will become and the more sense it will make for your programming and for your skills so we have one two three four five codes and what is the output of the following codes what is the output for every code of these five codes some of them are easy basics and some a little bit more difficult the first one numbers this is a list equals one two three four then we have for loop num and numbers print number print the num and this is easy because we have seen the similar so what it does it say for each number in the list numbers print number so the output should be one two three four run the code one two three four straightforward numbers one two three four for num and numbers print this time not num num times two right so what should be the output for this one pause the video think about it so what will happen for each number it will be printed times two so the first one i have one times two the output will be two two times two four three times two six and four times two that's eight so the output should be two four six eight third one i have the same list and for each item in this list if the number mod 2 equals 0 and this is famous you know it this is the even checking if the number is even then print the number and we have seen similar case so we'll print only the even numbers 2 and 4 the next one numbers equal 1 2 3 4 a list so for each number in this list if the number is even print the number times 2 else print the number times 3 so what do you think the output will be the first number one this is e this is odd so it will be multiplied by three so the output will be three two is even so multiplied by two three is odd multiplied by three then four is even multiplied by two so the output will be three four nine eight let's check it three four nine eight the last one a little bit tricky numbers this is a list one two three four total i i did i identify or define another variable variable total equals to zero total equals to zero so i am starting from zero and now my for loop says and for each number each item in my list numbers one two three four do the following take the total the old total which is zero at the starting point and add the number to it so the first case zero total means zero plus number which is one for the first case and the new total then take the sum and assign it to the new total which will be 0 plus 1 1 so the new total will be 1 then do the same for the second number 2 this is the number plus the total which is 1 in this case the total the new total will be 3 so what is happening actually we are finding the sum of all the elements inside all the items all the numbers inside the list first time this is 1 then I'm adding 2 to it then I'm adding a 3 I'm adding 4 and so on so the output here should be 1 plus 2 3 plus 3 6 plus 4 10 the output is 10 now if you want to see what is happening see one thing here important see the print there is no indentation it means this print is out of the for loop it doesn't belong to the for loop so do the whole calculation i'm telling python do all the sum 
calculate 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 then print me the total if you want to see each time the output for each after each iteration then this print we need to make it belonging to the for loop and how do we do that by doing the indentation the same as total so now Python understands okay this print is belonging to the for loop what will happen now Python will calculate the new total 0 plus 1 this is 1 then we'll print it then we'll go again and so on so you will see 1 the first output then 1 plus 2 that's a 3 then 3 plus 3 that's 6 then 6 plus 4 is 10 if you want to see only the grand total the final total the 10 then put the print outside of the for loop 10 another thing important to note is let me put the indentation so without indentation this is outside with indentation under the same consistent with the total this is under the for loop what if in between there will be an error so python now says okay there is no match for this indentation this print belongs to what doesn't bring to four it's not independent and just in the middle so this is not accepted by python be careful with these things but luckily python gives us this automatic see if i press enter it will put it under the for loop now if you want it under the for loop okay otherwise you put it outside print run the code and the output is there so these are just some examples to practice more on the for loop keep going and i'll see you next video to explore more about the control flow and this time with the while loop thank you and see you soon welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about the while loops in python while loops in python in python a while loop is a control flow statement control flow statement this is the other type of control flow statement similar to the for loop that allows you to repeat a block of code as long as a given condition is true let's see the syntax of the while loop i have while the word while and you can see the color is different because it's a built in word in python and then you have a certain condition then if this condition is it true there will be a code to be executed the code in the while loop will be executed repeatedly as long the condition is true once the condition becomes false the loop will stop executing let's see an example i have here a variable defined as 10 y equals to 10 then i have while then my condition y is greater than zero colon do what as long y is greater than zero print y then after you print y redefine y the new y as the old y or the current y minus one so what will happen here let's break it down i have 10 is 10 greater than zero yes then print 10 10 will be printed then the new y will be 10 minus 1 which is 9 then 9 greater than 0 9 will be printed then the new y will be 8 and so on until you reach 1 1 is greater than 0 yes print 1 the new y will be 1 minus 1 0 is 0 greater than 0 no then this while loop will stop executing let me run the code and we'll see the output 10 till 1 till till 1 another example imagine uh, let's define y equals to 10 this is a variable called y equals 10 while y is greater than 0 same example as long this condition equals or greater than 0 print now don't print just y i want to mix the if you remember the f string if the current value of y is y is y so, and then redefine the new y as y minus one as y minus one let me just ignore the else for now i will make it comment this is just focus one step at a time so i just added this string the current value of y is compared to the previous example i just want to show you that we are mixing now what we learned before with the new information we are learning let's see what's the output here instead of only just the numbers 10 9 8 till 1 i have the string the current value of y is so on till the current value of y is 1 okay this is what is happening and how did i do that by using the f string if you remember from the previous sections the current value of y is then i put my variable here y which will be printed every time and this f different color because this is the string of course you know there is another way of writing this one removing the f then put a dot here format dot format then you put your variables okay now 
what happens after the loop or the condition is once the condition reaches to a false when y equals 0 0 is not greater than 0 so the while loop will stop I can introduce else here let me remove the, com remove the comments else if this condition is false do what print y is not greater than 0 let me print it and y is not greater than 0 okay so also you can add else to while while a condition is a true do something if the condition is false else do something else another example another example i equals 10 while i is while i less than 10 print i then define the new i as the current i plus 1 so this is the opposite we are counting up okay so take a second and think about what will the output be so I have 0 0 less than 10 yes then print 0 then the new i is 0 plus 1 1 why 1 is less than 10 yes then print 1 so 0 1 2 3 till till 10 or till 9 till 9 right because 9 less than 10 print 9 the new i is 9 plus 1 10 is 10 less than 10 no then the while loop will stop executing so this is in a quick overview about the while loops take your time practice it do some examples and then i will see you in the next video we'll explain some built-in words or keywords that are often used with the while loop and the for loop break continue break continue and pass thank you very much keep going and i'll see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to continue with the control flow statements lessons we have started with for loops while loops and now we will introduce some built-in keywords pass continue and break that you will see used with the while loop and for loop so in python pass continue and break are keywords that can be used inside loops for loops and while loops to control the flow of the execution Let's start with the first one, pass. Pass is a null statement that does nothing. So when that statement pass, whenever Python sees the word pass, it will do nothing. If a condition is a true, then it will pass. It will not do any execution for any code. It's used as a placeholder in situations where statement is required, but no action need to be taken. Okay, no action need to be taken. So I know, for example, if a number is even, okay i will know i want to do something but i don't know what is this thing so i'll just retain i'll just put a pass for python to know that this is a placeholder in the future i will add a certain code to be executed so let's see an example i equals zero while i is less than 10 i equals the current i plus one if i is even then do nothing just pass in the future i will put a code here so python don't return me uh, an error because there will be an a code here how do we tell python that there will be a code in the future by putting pass okay so the number is even pass don't do anything else if the number is not even then print i so what will happen here zero zero less than ten the new i is zero plus one 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 is not even then i will go to else print one then one plus one that's two two is even yes then pass don't do anything don't print the two don't do anything then we go 2 plus 1, 3. 3 is not even, then print 3. So here what will happen, the output will be only the odd numbers. Only the odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Yes, because whenever the number is even, we will pass. We will not do anything. Now, if we remove pass, okay, and we run the code, there will be an error. Okay, there will be an error because Python says, okay, you put if statement, but there is... There is a condition for the if statement, but you didn't get tell me what to do. You didn't tell me what to do if the condition in the if statement is true. So that's why we put pass. Okay, we put pass. One, three, five, seven, nine. The next keyword is continue. Continue is used to skip the rest of the current iteration of a loop and move on to the next iteration. For example, I have a string named John okay name equals john this is a string for any letter for the letter in name if the letter equals h 
then then continue okay don't do anything don't print the h just go back to the next iteration so skip h and go to the next iteration so it will start with the j j equals h no then print j we go to the next letter next iteration o equals h no then print o h equals h yes then continue go back to the next iteration don't print don't do anything n equals h no then print the n so here the output will be j o and n okay continue means to to skip the condition and go continue break is used to immediately exit a loop and move on to the next line of code after the loop for example i equals zero this is famous we have seen it many times while i is less than 10 the new i equals zero plus one which is one if one equals five is i f one equals five no then print i print one then we go back to the next iteration one is less than 10 yes the new i will be one plus one two two equals five no then continue then here until four four less than 10 yes the new i equals four plus one five is five equals five yes then break stop don't do anything and just exit the exit the loop exit the loop okay immediately exit a loop and move on to the next line of code next line of code not like the previous break or continue not, not like continue or pass it will go back to the previous loop no it will go to the next line of code once i equals five it will break the loop and will exit let's run this code the output will be one two three four and five will not be printed because i'm telling python whenever my number equals five just to break exit the loop and go to the next line one two three four here i can put for example anything print this is not part of the while loop not else nothing it's just we want, we want to check because it says go to the next line of code this is next line of code hello just to do, demonstrate the outcome hello print hello this is a new line and because i broke the loop once my number became five then i will execute the next line of code which is hello out of the loop out of the loop so perfect we have seen continue pass and the break you will not see them often especially at the beginning but it's good to be familiar with them if you need them or if you saw them as part of any code you know what they are doing okay perfect thank you very much and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone in this lecture we are going to learn about some useful operators in python they don't belong exactly to a specific topic but because we are going to see them in while loops and for loops so it i put it in this section there are a few of them in this video we are going to learn about two at the beginning which are the range function and the n operator so let's start with the range in python the range function returns a sequence of numbers starting from zero by default and increments by one as a default and and, and it ends at a specified number specified number which is in the function so this is what we are going to see let's see some examples i have this for loop for i in range 5 print i so what will happen here the for loop will be executed and because i have the range function and the specified number is 5 my output will start from 0 by default then increment by 1 0 1 2 3 4 it will stop at 4 because the range is till 5 and 5 is not included so if i run this code i have 0 1 2 3 4 5 if i want 5 to be included i increase the range to 6 zero to five okay this is the first example so two things here range is a function you need to specify what number you want to stop at and note it's it will not be included then the increment is by one and starts from zero another example and in this example we'll start and stop the argument but also will increment by default one and we'll see if i want to change the starting point what can i do so for i in range 0 to 5 this is the default here correct this is the same as if i say from 0 if i remove the 0 it will be the same output because the default is from 0 right this is the starting point now i can say 
okay what if I want to start from 2 not from 0 so I put 2 as the beginning 2 3 4 the first input will be my starting point then the second one will be my last point and this is how I can change the starting point 2 3 4 if I want to start for example I want from 0 or from 1 let's say to 10 to 10 10 is not included I will say 1 2 3 4 5 9 okay 1 start from 1 I want numbers from 1 to 10 this is how I do it I want to include the 10 again I can just increase 1 and it will be 1 to 10 now here we'll add a step I don't want here the increment to be 1 each time I want it for example to be 2 so let's see this example for I in range I start from 3 and at 10 10 is not included and increment is 2 let's see the output it will be 3 5 7 and 9 let's see it 3 5 7 and 9 now if I increase this one by 1 what will happen nothing right 3 5 7 9 because it stops at 11 11 is not included if I want to include 11 I will put 12 here okay and of course you can play with the range I can put it 5 the steps and to be 3 and 8 and it will stop also this step can be negative I'm increasing here but I can also make it the opposite so let me make it just 2 and here my range starts from 5 ends at 10 and it's minus sorry it ends at 0 and it's minus 1 so it start 5 4 3 2 let's see and 1 5 4 3 2 and 1 0 is not included because it's the end of the range so also the step can be negative okay so we have seen a few examples for the range as a default start from 0 and the increment is 1 then we said we can change the starting point we can change the steps and the steps also can be negative now let's jump into the n keyword in Python the n keyword is used to check if an element is present in a sequence such as a list tuple string dictionary it returns the true if the element is present and it returns false if it is not present here are a few examples I have this list fruits apple banana and orange apple in fruits I'm asking is apple in fruits now yes apple in fruit so the output will be a boolean true what if I change it I say grapes is grapes in fruits it's false it's not there and what happens if I add a capital is it it's false it's not there no? so it's sensitive it's case sensitive if you want to check if a value is present in, the, in a dictionary you can use the values method and the in operator for example this is start from the beginning fruit this is a dictionary apple key and red is a value banana key yellow is a value orange key and the color is orange now I'm asking red in fruit and let me start from the beginning I'm asking is red in fruit and here because red is the value I would like to actually start with the keys so apple in fruit and should be true because I have apple and by default in dictionaries if you are using the n keyword it will look in the keys it will look in the keys so it's a true now see if I say red is red in fruit it will be false because I'm looking at the keys apple banana and orange not at the values okay at the keys shortly we'll learn how to look in the values for example here I can add fruit red fruit dot and you remember this values open brackets and now if I run it it will give me true because now I'm asking to check is red in the values of the dictionary not in the keys of course I can do the keys but no need because it's by default looking in the keys now this will be false because red is not in any of the keys I can say banana and it should be true in this case yes now you can also check the operator whether in the value present in a dictionary another example prices 
apple 0.5 banana 0.25 orange 0.75 apple in prices yes it is what if take a few seconds and tell me if if strawberry is in prices strawberry in prices and the answer should be false right what if i want to check 0.5 is there any item in my dictionary that cost let's say two dollars two dollars so two in the prices and now what happens here python is looking in the keys so i need to add values because the prices are in my values so i need to add dot dot values and there is no item that cost two dollars so this is good when you want to check if an item is present in a dictionary or if a price a value is a present in the dictionary now also the final example example also you can use the end operator to test whether a value is a present in a string we saw it in a list in a tube in dictionary in a string we can also demonstrate in tuples in this case it will return true if the value is found in the substring and false otherwise so i have a string name equal alice a in name let's check is it true because a is there what if i make it b is b there it's false because it's not there what if i make it small letter a and run it's false because it is case sensitive it is case sensitive okay this is a quick view in the next video we are going to explore more operators including zip okay thank you and i'll see you in the next video welcome everyone again in this video we are going to learn two more operators in python enumerate and zip so let's start with enumerate and it is a built-in python function that allows you to loop over a list of items while keeping track of the index position of each item so we will take the item and we'll take its index and we'll return them in a tuple it takes an iterable object such as a list and returns an iterator that it produces don't worry about this produces tuple containing the index and the value from the object at that index so the index and its value let's see example to make it clear i have this list fruits apple banana and mango now if i say enumerate fruits and i will iterate over the list for item in enumerate fruits not only uh, fruits i'll take the function and enumerate fruits so for each item in the fruits i will enumerate it what does it mean to take the index of the item and the item itself so if i run the code the output will be zero and apple because apple is in the index zero then one and banana two and mango and they are retained in a tuple right retained or produced a tuple zero apple one banana two mango i can unpack them we learned before unpacking we can unpack them by giving the for example here i can say index and fruit actually let me do it in another code just to keep this source code this original code for you if you want to review it so let me just run it make sure everything okay i will copy this and have a new code so we can compare as well so fruit apple is the same here i can change this instead of item i can say index so because the first one is my index it doesn't matter what you call it if you remember but it's better to give something related index and the second one is a fruit and here in enumerate fruits yes and the items will be changed to index and fruit right just make sure the spelling everything is correct if i run this code see what happened it's unpacked now i can change it even more and say print for me the index alone then print for me the fruit alone okay and if i run this code it will be zero apple one banana two mango okay so this is unpacking as well so now we can have the item and its index at the same time this is called or can be done or can be achieved by the enumerate function 
the second one is the zip function and this is almost the opposite of enumerate it takes in one or more iter more iterable object and retains an iterator of tuples again tuples the iterators tuple contain the corresponding elements from each of the input iterables not very clear let's see examples to make it clear here are some examples so the first example we need to zip two lists together i have list one list two and i want to put put them together i identified i defined a variable called zipped and this is my function zip and between inside my function i will put list one and list two and see the output before i will remove this comment and the output will be tuple one and a two and b three and c let's see the output 1a 2b 3c and i just put them inside the list i can remove this okay before let me actually do one thing here just to compare i will make this as a comment and now i will run run so everything is okay there is no error now if you want to show the zip see what will happen it will not retain the values i'll show you it will retain it will retain just the location so python is telling you that there is yes this function and the type or this variable and the type of this variable is a zip and this is the location if you want to return it you want to say print print and print it as a list print it as a list that's why we put here the print okay so let's run it and i have one two three and because zip is also there it returns for me the location but i don't need it i just need a list that include as the zipped two lists okay list one and list two okay perfect another example now we can even zip more than two lists now let's try with three lists list one two three and now i have 10 20 30 the zipped the same way equals zip list one list two list three and inside i will print the the list of zipped okay we are making it as a list just to put the tuples inside a list so i have now three elements three items inside each tuple 1a and 10 because i have three lists so what happens it takes one item from each list one from list one then a from list two then 10 from list three then 2b 20 3c 30 okay mixing them or zipping them together i can do the same with the strings a b c one two three zip two strings zip the function string one and string two then the output will be a one b two c three right a one b two and c three and remember as we said here at the beginning it will be retained as tuples retains as tuples an iterator of tuples it will retain as tuples so a one b two c three all are inside the tuple zip a list and a string now we can mix and just list quickly see the output i have by list one two three and string abc so one a two b three c okay it can also is possible then zip two tuples together i have tuple one one two three abc and the same way i can zip them together one a two b and three c okay so you can zip two strings two tuples list and string three strings or more it's flexible this is useful if you want to zip things together you want to merge together and more or less is the opposite of enumerate okay very good this is good introduction in the next video we'll see more of these operators keep going and i'll see you shortly in the next video welcome everyone in this lecture we are going to learn how to accept input or how to request input from a from the users so in python the input function allows us to accept input from the users it reads input from the user as a string this is very important always the input will be read as a string so you may need to cast the string to a different data type to use it in your program if necessary here is a few examples how to use the input function in our codes so the first one the function is input input and what do you want the user to input your name for example so if i run this code there will be a request from the user to input their name user so your name i will say mozen mozen your name mozen and it returned as a string you see it's a string if you want to make sure we can say 
here I can define this as a result let's say this is a variable called result I run the code okay it's Mozon and now if I want to see the type of result just to make sure and to show you that it is a string and I run the code it will be your name Mozon and the type is string your name Mozon and string I can here put a welcome message as the next example for example name equals input enter your name so here I'm asking the user to enter their name then once they input their name I'll say hello and the name okay run the code it will ask me for my name I'll say Mozon then hello Mozon hello Mozon I'm using the F string formatting print formatting you remember this from the first section if you have any doubts go back to the first section it will be clear so I'm asking input from the user then I return it as a string it's returned as a string let's see how the numbers will work because I'm expecting or I am asking the user to enter a number but the output will be a number as a string is a string right so let me run this code it's asking for a number let's say five I say enter the number is five let me but just put colon here just for decoration so five the number five and it's returned as a string now here if I want to check let's say result equals and run the code sorry run the code result five or six any number and now if I want to check the type of the result my variable it will be a string and that's a problem right that's if I want to use it in a calculation in a calculation that will be creating issues why issues because I can say result plus four and I expect here let's run the code the user entered number six then the result plus four that should be six plus four which is ten right but see what happens when I there will be an error because my result is a string and we cannot do a string plus a number or an integer string plus integer doesn't work so how do we solve this one how do we solve this one we can do here in the input I can make it as int just cast it with int as simple as that and run the code now asking six six plus the result is uh, the result the type of result is integer now because I said it's integer and now if I want to do an operation I can do it yes because the output of or the when the user enters anything in the input function that will be read as a string it will be read as a string and I cannot do a string plus integer or plus a float now let's see if I want to do operations here's an example number one is the integer of the number this input from the user and number two will be another input from the user then my result equals number one plus number two and here I can do the addition because I converted them to integers let's run the code and see how it works so enter a number I say five then enter another number I will say seven enter the result is 12 okay my result is 12 my result is 12 and this is possible if because I am converting them to integers let's see if I remove the int from here enter number six let's say and four enter the result is 64 now what happened both of them are is are strings so if you remember the errors or the string plus string we learned when we learned the strings at the very beginning of the course we have a string is six another string is four when we add them there will be no error but they will be merged in an unexpected way we thought okay six plus four that's ten but here will be sixty four which is a string and if you want to check the type of string we can do that or the type of result sorry type 
result it will be a string six let's say four the result is 64 and it's a string not integer to, to solve this one we need to cast both in integer okay and to convert the way from whatever output change it to integer okay then you can do your calculations and operation the result is 10 and it is an integer perfect this is about the input for now we'll see it in more complex programs make sure the very important message is the output of the input function is a string thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone welcome again in this video we are going to learn about list comprehension in python list comprehension and python list comprehension is a concise way to create a list it reads like a sentence for example create a list for x for each y and z okay it's not very clear let's see some examples i have word as a string hello okay hello now i can say return for me create a list for each letter in the word hello in the word hello for create form create a list for each letter that includes each letter in the word hello create a list that includes each letter of the word hello let's see the output it will be a list and the items inside this list are the letters of the word hello look at the syntax it's x for x in word okay this x similar to the for loop can be anything it can be item and if i run the code it will give the same result doesn't ma doesn't matter doesn't matter usually the best is to be to be something related to my list so let's it includes letters so let's make it letter also there's an ex uh, we can see another example where I have a list that includes three strings and we need to create let's say the length I need to find the length of each string my list called strings it includes three strings cat window and defenestrate and I want to find the length of each string and return these lengths in a list so I have lengths it's a list and the list inside the list I have length of X this is the function for this function return the length in each string okay return the length of each string again how it works I have item and for each item return the length return what always what will be returned the output is the initial input here it's length of X okay if I run this it will be 3 6 and 12 right I can change this length okay let's try with just keeping it as X let's see what happens okay let's see what happens X for X and strings and to return as we expect the items inside the string similar to the first example it returns the ex the 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 items inside my list right cat window different street which is the same now if i want to see for example i want to double each one i can say times two so it can be here a function it can be an operation cat cat window window and double the last word also also what i can do is find the length and then say x so this is my output remember your output at the beginning for each item inside your list now I run it it gives me the length you can do any operation including function including just simple operations calculations on the first part okay also you can add if you can have a, add a condition for example let's see it here you can also use list comprehension to create a list of the lengths of a list of strings that meet a certain condition so I want to find the length and if the length meets certain condition for example less than six letters here then I will print that string so I'll print only the strings that meet the condition length is less than six 
so I have the list then short strings another another list but shortened based on the condition and it says okay print for me return for me the strings who meet the condition length of x is less than six and I have cat and window less than six letters so they will be returned okay cat and window one two three four five six sorry window will not be retained is how many one two three six so i did a mistake here so only cat will be retained if i say less than seven then that will be retained cat at window okay so it's not only cat so i think i changed the six so now everything is okay so what does it do here i will check first of all is the length is less than seven letters then do the beginning do the the first part return for me the strings in my list based on their length if their length is less than seven letters then return them otherwise don't return them okay perfect also i can use the same four numbers i can use the same four numbers I have a list number called numbers one two three four I want to find their squares I just say x squared for x and numbers this is straightforward easy if I want to retain the numbers themselves it's just remove the squares but there is no point because I already have the list itself right so I will just keep it x square and here you can do any operation you can do any operation on the left now I can retain the numbers based on a condition by adding if statement and here an example numbers equal one two three four even squares i want to find the squares only for the numbers that are even only for the even numbers so i will say my if statement is on the right if x mod 2 equals 0 this is famous for the checking even numbers then what will happen square these numbers square the numbers and if i print i have two with square four and four square 16 so it should be four and 16 okay so again you start with x for x or item for item in my list and then if you two things you need to pay attention for if you want to do any operation any function on you do it on the left side and if you want to add if statement you add it on the right side okay this is readable one line you can do the same you can achieve the same as we have seen before using the for loop but if you want that's why they call it comprehension it's one line quick and readable and easy to understand okay perfect it's enough for this video we are going to see more complex examples if necessary later on in the practice and the quizzes for now thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video Welcome everyone. In this lesson, we are going to introduce some questions to test our knowledge on Python statements, comprehension lists, and some operators. Whatever we study in this section, we are going just to put some questions. Some of these questions are straightforward, easy, some of them more challenging. The best way to practice and improve your skills in Python or any programming language is to challenge yourself and try to solve questions that you did not encounter before. <clears throat> so let me introduce the questions in this video and in the next video we are going together inshallah to write and check the solutions first question says write a program that reads a list of words from a variable this is the variable words equals and the list and then prints out all of the words that have more than four letters so we need a program that check that checks each of these words in this variable this is a list of words and print out the words that are more than four letters second question write a program that re that treats a list of words from a variable same one and then prints out the number of words that contain the letter e contains the letter e okay third question write a program that reads a list of words from a variable and then prints out the words that are palindromes and it, what it means words that are the same forward and backward like race car level wow these three words are same if you read them forward or backward we need a program that iterates over this list and print the words if it's 
meeting this condition. Next question, write a program that uses range to print all of the odd numbers from 1 to 10. And this should be straightforward. Write a program that uses list comprehension to create a list of all the even numbers between 1 and 50. Even numbers between 1 and 50. Also should be straightforward. We have seen similar questions in the lessons. The next question, go through the string below and if the length of a word is even, print even. If the length of a word is even, print even. Next question, write a program that prints the integers from 1 to 100, but for multiples of 3, print fizz instead of the number. And for the multiples of 5, print buzz. For the numbers which are multiples of both 3 and 5, print fizz buzz. So there are three conditions or three cases. Multiple of 3, multiples of 5, multiples of both 3 and 5. And here you need to use F elif else correct and the last question write a program that uses list comprehension to create a list of all the words in the string that have more than three letters i forgot to add the string i will add the string for you shortly and here is the string this is a string with some words okay try to solve it with list comprehension then try solving it with for loop okay good luck and try your best don't watch the solutions before you try once twice three times even if you receive errors try to fix them and then compare your answers your solutions to the next video and see where did you miss or where it was difficult for you to figure out okay good luck for now and see you in the next video hello everyone and we'll come back. I hope you spent enough time to solve the questions and here are the answers. So the first question, write a program that reads a list of words from a variable and then prints out all of the words that have more than four letters. So looking at this question that there is a condition, we need if statement, right? And because we have a list, a string, yeah, and variable words is a variable, which is a list including some strings. So also, that gives us a hint that we need a for loop. So what can what we can do? We can say for word in words, and doesn't matter this this item doesn't matter as long as it's consistent. So for word in words, if the length because here we are saying print out all of the words that have more than four letters. So how can we check if it has more than four letters by using the function length, right? Len len of the word is more than four letters, correct? So if this condition is true, what should we do? print out the word so print word and we need to iterate we need to iterate over since we need to check each and every element inside the list we need for loop so we need to iterate on each item in each item inside this list so for item or for a word inside the words inside this list which is called words please go ahead and check is this word more than four letters if yes print the word else do nothing okay else do nothing so from quick look we know from a quick look that we know that only the last word which is words has more more than four letters so the output should be words okay let me explain it again so now how can i approach this one i'm looking at this one print out all of the words that have more than four letters so more than four letters then i know i need if statement if the since i'm talking about the length of the word more than four letters then i need to use the function length right of the word or call it whatever you want is more than four then colon what should i do print that word right Pr print that word now i'm checking here word by word i'm checking word by word how can i iterate and check word by word i need for loop for word in words words must be words similar spelling as this one and colon and then don't forget the indentation don't forget the indentation f belongs to four and the print belongs to f so see the indentation very important so now makes it's clear words okay so you can say since i want to iterate over a list of items i need a for loop 
okay then since i want to check if a condition is met or no i need if if statement and because i want to check the number of letters then i need a len length function okay perfect second question write a program that reads a list of words from a variable and then it prints out all the number out the number of words that contain the letter e again we need to we need to use similar approach similar approach since i want to check all the items inside inside a list i need to use for loop so for word in words if what is the condition print out the number of words that contain the letter e number of words so if e in word if e in the word that we are checking if the word that we are checking has the letter e if this condition is a true do what we need to count it we need to count it how do we count it we define the variable count and we set it to zero as initial as initial state status or state it has zero elements or zero items inside it i will go then i will go and check the first item does it have the letter e if yes i will add one i will add one so the new count the new count for my variable becomes one then the second one third one and so on so let me run this code and the answer is zero there are none of the words has the letter e so how it works count zero initial value for word and words for each word in this list does it check for this condition does it have the letter e no then update the count update the count if it's a true if it's false then go back this does it has the letter e no then go back and go to the next one is no doesn't have e imagine that i have let me introduce here a word that is this for example english and let's see what happens now the code is working so i have one so make sure you understand how it works whenever you want the 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 number of okay count out the number of words then you need count equals count plus one we have seen this many times if you want to here for example see the indentation impact nothing because i have only one word but if i add another word here let's say um, beautiful that has the letter e and then comma and now i run the code i have it's running okay beautiful this is one then it counts counts it comes to english this is two if i want only the final count then the output will be two without one so that's why the indentation is important again since i want to check all the items inside a list then i need a for loop since i want to check a statement true or false i need f and since i want the number of words sum of the number of words for example sum between 1 and 50 then i need count equals count plus one again don't worry about the count it can be anything item 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 as long it is consistent okay let's go to the third question write a program that reads a list of words from a variable and then it prints out the words that are palindromes or palindromes depends how you pronounce it words that, and this the definition of this words that are same forward and backward so we have our list here race car level hello wow it's obvious that race car hello and wow these are meeting the condition and since i want to check again since i want to check items in a list i need for 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 loop and since i want to check for a condition i need f statement so for word in words for any word in these words check does this word equals the reverse of it and how do we do the reverse of a word is by using this expression colon colon minus one let me just give an example for example i can say my list or let's say yes my list whenever you want to give a reverse of a word or a list you can do the following let me define my list equals one two three four and five now i can say my list okay then i'll say reverse it for me go over 
all the items from the beginning till the end but do what do minus one do the reverse okay and if i run the, this code no, it will be reversed it will be reversed five four three two one so we use the same technique here go through each word and check is the word equals its reverse if yes if this condition is met print that word else do nothing so let's see the result race car level wow and i can say here if you want to expand it else print print what print let's say nice just to demonstrate the idea nice okay so the third word became nice so i know here that hello is not meeting the condition or i can just make it anything i want okay perfect next question write a program that used range we know range yes it's a function to print all of the odd numbers from 1 to 10 and this is easy for i in range we have seen similar question from 1 to 11 and the step is 2 right i start start at 1 to make 1 3 5 7 only the odd numbers and the step is 2 so i skip the even numbers and from 1 to 10 because if i put to here 10 10 will not be counted and that's why i will take 11 to count 10 as well and here one three five seven nine okay you can play with this question also and if you want the even numbers for example then i will start from zero and then two four six um, and if i don't if i want for example the step three i can take step three for example one odd one even one odd one even you can play with this question as you want huh? so just my idea is the last input here this is the step this is the end point and zero is the beginning point which is by default okay by the way zero is not considered i believe it's considered even still there is a debate i believe on this but anyway python wise programming wise our program is okay then next question write a program that uses list comprehension to create a list of all the even numbers between 1 and 50 and this is easy we have seen similar even numbers equal a list includes i for i in range 251 2 okay this is exactly the same like the one before okay but this is for even numbers 251 and 2 and if we print it will give you all the numbers then go through the string below and if the length of a word is even print even i have the string and again i need to go through it then i need for loop check for whenever you want to check for a condition then you need if statement so it says word and string dot split why i'm splitting because i it's a string here is not a list if it was a list like the examples here they are separated already then okay but now first I need to split them right if you remember the function is split let me just demonstrate this one here let me say print words this is the name of my list dot split okay and if I run this code sorry this one should be oops split or before that I can remove the print and let me make it just simple without the printing then I have all my attributes I will use a split and then give it a function and then if I run the code then I need to bring it back without split why is not giving split sorry something is yes I need just to put it on top and let me comment everything here and then run the code and no attribute split list object has no attribute split hello everyone let's continue we stopped the last time 
in the first part of the solution at this question we finished this question let me go through it again quickly write a program that uses a list list comprehension to create a list of all even numbers between 1 and 50 this is easy question even numbers this is my variable equals list and inside the list I will say the comprehension list the list comprehension uh, method let's say I for I in range 251 2 and the 2 starting point 51 the end point and the 2 is the step why I start from 2 because 2 is the first even number if we don't consider the zero and then my end point 51 why 51 because the last the 51 will not be taken and the last number will be taken is 50 and 2 is the step 2 is the step so I will skip the odd numbers 3 5 7 and so on and I will type or print or give the output only for the even numbers Next, qu next question go through the string below and if the length of a word is even print even so since I want to go through each word of this string I need for loop and since I want to check for a condition then I need if statement and then since I want to check for the length of the word then I need the len function right so we saw this kind of similar before so how do I start I need my for loop starting with word in string dot split why I didn't say word in string word in string that's it without the split because it will not work I need to split this string I need each item of this string to be treated alone so let me give just an example about dot split if you forget it so here if I say for example my st my string equals and I say my string number one okay then I go down and I say my string dot and then I will have a list and if I say split s p l i t then always I need the brackets and then <coughs> if I run this code it will be split it the string will be split it into a list and each word will be in separated in a co be, uh, between each two words there will be a comma my string number one okay so we are using the same here I am converting this string into a list and separating each word inside the string okay each word of the string so kind of I sent back that string into a list format a list format by using the split okay so I change it to a split using the split function and for each word in this string after I split it I want you Python to check for me is the length of this word is even how do I do the even we saw it many times using the mod 2 equals 0 if this is a true then print even else print the word okay and if I run this code even even this because it has four letters is has two letters a is one letter so it's a printed string with three six letters four letters four letters so they will be printed as even and words is five letters will be printed as it is next question write a program that prints the integers from one to hundred however for multiples of three print fizz instead of the number and for multiples of five print buzz for numbers which are both multiples of three and five print fizz buzz fizz buzz okay so we have three conditions so from this I know I need f l f l f correct and because I want to go for all the numbers for a range between one and hundred I need to use for loop and range for loop and range right we have seen the first line we saw the first line before in many examples so I will say for I in range 1 to 101 why 101 because my last number is 100 and 101 will not be taken 100 will be the last number so in this range between 1 and 100 check for me if the number the first condition I will go from the most strict one the most strict one is the number multiple of 3 and 5 so how do I do that I say if I mod 3 equals 0 because the same way we, we, we checked before to for even numbers I can check also for if the number is multiple of 3 by dividing the number over 3 for example 9 mo 9 mod 3 equals 0 because 9 divided by 3 that's a 3 and the remainder is 0 and at the same time I mod 5 equals 0 that's the multiple of 5 if both conditions I used here and right I used and if both conditions are met what should I do print fizz buzz print fizz buzz else 
if, which is the short elif, if it's only multiple of three, i mod three equals zero, then print fizz. Elif i multiple of five print zero, uh, print buzz. I mod five equals zero, print buzz. If none of the above conditions are met, then print the number itself. Print the number itself, right? Print the number itself because none of the conditions are met. Let me see. I will run the code. And here you have all the numbers starting from one. One, two, three. Three is not printed because it's multiple of three. And this is fuzz, fizz. Then four is printed. Doesn't meet any condition. It's not multiple of three, not multiple of five. Then buzz because multiple of five, fizz of three. Then I have nine. No, let me see. I need the first number that meets the first condition, which is multiple of three and multiple of five which is 3 times 5 15 so it's correct fizz buzz fizz buzz because it meets both conditions until you reach to 100 which is multiple of 5 okay perfect now this is the last number this is the question this is nice question because it has three conditions and else and also it has for loop also it has the operators here the logical operators right it's a nice question okay let's go to the next question here alternative solution is the same question but alternative solution using list comprehension list comprehension it's a little bit less readable so i don't recommend to use this one for such a question it's better to use the for loop for loop because it's more it's more uh, let's say organized more readable however we can do it also using the list comprehension i can say and there's a trick here since i have else in my program i put the f at the beginning and i start with the most strict let's say condition fizz buzz f it's multiple of three and five the same else then fizz f i is multiple of three else buzz if it's multiple of five else f i for i in range one to one hundred if you remember when we had only f alone then we put the f after we put the f after but since we have f else and more than one else then we put it before so it's a little bit tricky so i recommend to use the for loop for this specific question or similar type of questions next question write a program that uses list comprehension to create a list of all words in the string that have more than three letters i have a string i want to print all the words that have more than three letters and we said let's use list comprehension and then we'll introduce it with for loop again just think about this in logical way since i want to go through all the words then i need for loop and then since i want to check for a condition i need f statement and since i want to number of letters in a word then i need a length because that's length of the word so how do we do that i introduce a variable called long words and it's a list it starts with word for word and string to split why did i split the string to convert it to a list right and split each word then i will check and iterate inside each word inside each word so word for word and string to split if len of the word is bigger than three okay what should i do print long words at the end okay so this conditional format if this condition is met if length of the word is greater than three give me word of word for word and string dot split again string dot split this is to change this string into a list and then i will iterate over each word inside that list after i splitted it then i will check for the condition on each word if the number of letters more than three or not if the number of letters more than three or not then i will print that list let me run this code and it should give me this string with some words this string with some words okay so perfect so whatever you want you the, the answer of this statement the if condition is at the beginning so what should i do if the length is more than three then give me the word okay the word now i can say 
word times two. And if you remember word times two, it will be doubled. This, 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 string, string, and so on. Just to show you that whatever, if the condition here, if the if statement is true, then this is what will happen at the beginning here. Another point I would like to highlight for you, see the if statement is after the for loop. However, in the previous example, it's before because I have else. Just keep note of this. Also, I can do it for with the for loop alternative solution using for loop and if statement. My string is the same. Long words, I defined an empty list and then I will add to it to it. So I my for loop is the same exactly here for word word for word and string dot split for word and string dot split. If the length is greater than three, the same, then what should I do? Long words, this empty list. Now I will use the function append and append what? I append the word here. Okay. If so if this condition is met, do changes to my list which is defined as long words by adding that word which met the condition. So this let's take one example. Link words empty cell, empty list. For words and string dot split. So for each word of these words. Is the length of the word greater than three? For the word this, yes, it's true. Then what should I do? Long words, add to long words, this empty list, add to it the word that you have just checked, which is this. So now I will have this and so on. So it's the same exact answer here, of course, because I put multiple by two. Now you can see exactly the same answer. Okay, these are nice questions. Even if you get a little of correct answers, the point is to do them again. Try to do them yourself. Now you have seen the answers. Switch off the video, close the video, pause the video, and try to do the questions again by yourself until you have zero errors. Then you will practice more and more. Programming is a matter of experience, matter of a practice. The more you do, the more errors you will encounter, the more cases, scenarios, use cases you will see, and the better you will become. Okay, great. You have done a very good job. We have finished a long section, another long sec section, and now things will get also nicer. We'll have more skills, more ability to perform more complex programs and have more practical examples. Very good job. I will see you in the next video. Welcome everyone again. In this lecture, we are going to talk about methods in Python. So this is the first lecture in the methods and functions section where we are going to learn about methods, about functions, how to define functions and how to get the advantage or advantage of the flexibility of Python and create our own functions. So let's start with the first lecture and, and let's learn about methods in Python. In Python, a method is a function that is associated with an object. You can define your own methods in Python classes or you can use methods that are already provided by Python. Let's see some examples about some methods in Python. We have seen many of them. We'll see some examples here and we'll learn also how to get some help and some documentation about the methods in Python. So let's start with some simple examples. The first method, and we saw this before, lower. And this is a method of the string class that returns a new string with all uppercase letters converted to lowercase. For example, I defined here my string equals hello world. And then if I say my string dot, dot lower, it will give me all the letters lowercase right the h and the h in this case now one thing i would like to show you if i say here my and just call string and then if i just type the dot and wait for a second you will have this list of some methods okay some methods and for example you have capitalize case fold center many of them we are not going to go through all the methods we are just seeing some examples and many of these you will see while we are programming or learning a new a new, a new things in python so the first thing i would like you to know that you have a list of the methods associated with the string you have and how do you have that you just type a dot and then you will have the list then you select the method that you are looking for for example i want lower 
then if you start writing the first letter it will filter and I have three I will take the lower then always don't forget the parentheses and then run the code so this is the third method lower second one I would like to show you is sort and these are only examples only examples of methods sort this is a method of the list class that sorts the elements of a list in ascending order in ascending order for example my list equals 3142 if I want to list to make this list in ascending order I can just simply type my list which is my string name dot sort my list dot sort then if I run this code it will, it will give me the output one two three four one two three four from the smallest to the largest number and this is associated with a list and the first method lower this is associated with a string for example if I say here or let me take the string here my underscore string and I say dot and now I want to sort this string does it work let's see I start s o r t and nothing appears because the sort method is associated with lists only it works with lists only okay the next one is pop and we saw this method as well this is a method of the list class that removes and retains the last element of a list removes and retains the last element of a list so the output will be the removed element so let's see examples my list equals one two three four my list dot pop and if i run this code what do you expect the output will be for because this list or this method will remove the last element which is four and return it return four not return the new list if you want the new list to be printed on the screen then you need to call it my list and one two three see you don't have you don't have the four in this case okay what if you want both then as we saw before you just type print right and now if I run the code print the removed number or element will be printed then the last call will be my list and I am calling my list if the list is empty it raises an index exception or error now for example let me show you let me define or let me just work on the same my list if I say and it is empty now now if I run the code there will be an error index error and says pop from empty list you are trying to remove an element from empty list what can I remove nothing so there is index error the next one is get this is a method of the dictionary class and as we know dictionaries are data structures that map keys to values that retrieves the value for a given key so if you want to know what is the value of any key you use the get method if the key is not found in the dictionary it returns a default value let's see examples so I defined my dictionary equals a1 b2 c3 then if I ask Python to return for me B let me just comment these ones now if I run the code so I'm asking Python get me the value for the key B my key B what is the value associated with this key the answer is 2 right now if I want for D the answer should be error right let me just remove the indentation just we are on the same line and the answer here nothing right why because there is no D A B C and there is no D there is no D now what if so we said if we have a key then it will return its value if the key is not there there is no key that is called D then there will be no return nothing and the third case I would like to show you if I have the this case where I want to return from D and 4 I have now D and 4 yes it will work because I defined D in this case okay so now let me check one thing what is the type of this line 
what is the output of this line is it none let's see so first of all I will make this as a comment and this if I say here type and open brackets parentheses and run the code and none type none type because here it doesn't give error but it returns nothing it tells me that for the key D which is not existing in your dictionary I'm returning nothing so that's why the type is none type okay keep note of these things the next one is in it and this is advanced I don't want you to worry at all about this one for now I just introduce it we are going to see it when we talk about classes and object oriented programming but just for introduction this is a special method in Python classes that is used to initialize an instance instance of the class it's called when an instance of the class is created don't worry about all these terms and it can be used to set up attributes and perform other tasks for example I have a class I, I, I defined a class called my class then there is a function def, define the function and I use this method in it okay and don't worry at all later on we are having long lectures about the init about the classes about defining functions and so on for now I just want you to know that there is an init method in Python now let me give you we saw we saw all these methods and there are many methods in Python the best way is to explore a little bit from your side you will learn while you are programming also more of them but we cannot go over each and every method because it will take hours and hours and it doesn't make any sense learn them by doing by encountering them and exploring and one way to explore about methods about functions about anything in Python you want help about it is to call the help function to call the help function how do we do that you can ask for help for let me put it here for example you have let's say the function we have seen let's take simple one print we know what does print do imagine that you are new or someone is a new to Python and would like to know more about this word Python so simply you can call the help function and for the word print and gives you details here help on built in function print in module print and gives you the syntax of it then tells you more details about this word print what does it do okay what does it do it's built in function called the print okay and you need to enter a value if you want to separate and so on many things so if you want to see for example another one we have seen range click enter or run the code and gives you also more help and there are many methods associated with range and gives you a list of each method and also gives you example and what it will return we can use it also with lists for example I defined here list underscore one and here if I say list underscore one and let me call a method let's say append I don't know what append does so I go and say help and then between parentheses and I call run the code and help on built-in function append append is a built-in function and what does it do it gives you the details here it gives you the details append object to the end of the list so brief help or tells you more details about this method okay perfect now we have seen quick summary some methods we know what is a method and we have seen how to call for help or check for more details about different let's say object types about lists about strings also we can do about methods about functions and so on so this is a quick overview a start for this section in the next sections we are going to learn more about functions and how to define them keep going and I will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to start learning more about functions in Python functions in Python and we are going to divide the lectures into two parts first part we are going to discuss the built-in functions in Python and we have seen many of them and in the next lecture we are going to learn how to define and create our own functions if a function that doesn't appear 
or is not existing in Python, I can define it and we need to learn how to define it to take advantage of the power advantages of functions. Okay, let's start step step. Built-in functions are used to perform a wide variety of tasks such as manipulating strings, converting data types, we are going to see examples, and working with data structures like lists and dictionaries. For example, Python has a built-in function for finding the length of a string, converting a string to all lowercase or uppercase, and sorting a list, and so on. Let's see some examples. First example, we are going to learn about the upper function, and we have seen this one. I'm just showing you again as a start to learn the basics of functions. So next time, next lecture, we are going to learn how to create our own functions. So s equals hello world. This is function. This is my string. Then if I say s dot upper, this will give me the capital for all the letters. Hello world. And this is a function in Python. Another one is len. And this function, as we know already, it retains the length of a string or list or tuple or other sequences. For example, s equals hello world. Now the length will print or will retain the number of items inside this string, including the spaces, including comma, everything. And the total is 13. If I run the code, I have 13 for the S and I have four for the list L. The next function is range. And this function retains or generates a sequence of numbers starting from a start value and ending at an end value. And we have seen this one as well. And if I have my range 1 10 2 1 is the starting point 10 is the end point and 2 is the steps and if i want to print this function it will give me 1 3 5 7 and 9 right because the step is 2 this is another function then i have this sum function and by the name as the name suggests it gives you the sum of a list or sequence and here is 10 and there are many functions we are not going to go over them all of them because you can find them different places in the documentation as i will show you now or within the next programs we are going to create so let me open this documentation within python website python.org website and this documentation includes help and documents and tutorials about different topics in python so this is the website python.org and in this documentation it shows all the functions the python interpreter has a number of functions and types built into it that are always available always available because it's built in function they are listed here in alphabetical order and you can see there are many of these functions let's take one len for example and it gives you the explanation what does it do some syntax then it moves other functions there are many so i suggest you also to go around this and play around it learn a little bit we have the range also we learned about the range so there are many things here in this documentation can be helpful but also as we learned before you can just use the help from here if you want a brief range a brief help and this shows you here what is the details of this function which is called range okay it's range and module built ends and range start point end point and the step start stop and the step so this is a quick introduction into functions built in functions in python part one in the next lecture i'm going to introduce how do we build how do we build our own functions so the main advantage of a function is to reduce the time of of execution or building a code so instead of here instead of saying if i want where is the sum let's say sum sum i have one two three four imagine that i want to sum these four numbers and i don't have the function sum so what i will need to do i'll say one plus two plus i need to do it manual right three plus four and then do this operation and imagine if you have larger list or many items then it will be very difficult imagine that you need to write a code for changing the changing from lowercase to uppercase in this case you need to write a for loop long code that iterates over each letter and changing from lower to upper and so on so 
functions make it short make it short and quick so this is what we are going to learn in the next lecture how to build our own functions thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this lecture we are going to dive deeper into functions in python in the first part we learned about built-in functions like sum like range like len and so on now we said the second part we can build our own functions we can define our own functions so in python a function is a block of code we agreed on that that performs a specific task now you can define your own functions to re to reuse code and make your programs more organized and easier to read and maintain these are the benefits of the function because instead of writing long code i can with one word like range to perform a certain task which is creating a list of numbers from 1 to 100 instead of writing these numbers by my hand right for example simple example to use a function you first need to define it let's see example so this is the syntax of a function always start with the word diff for definition okay for definition or define diff then the name of your function greet then an argument between the parentheses what do you want to retain this is the parameter okay your parameter name then colon then a block of code tells what to do with this function which is here print hello and i can say print hello for example and i need to return a name i can say here let's try name okay like this this is name it need to match the parameter here the parameter now to, de to define a function let me first run this code just to make sure everything is okay no errors now to define a function you need to specify the name of the function and here in this case is a greet the argument it takes which is the parameter name the function definition should also include a colon at the end here and then a block of indented code that specifies what the function does this code is indented you see these spaces and this tells us what does the code do hello name it prints hello plus name so now running the code everything is okay no errors now i didn't call the function to call the function you need just to type the name of the function specific to call the function you simply use the function name greet right greet followed by a set of parentheses and inside you need to tell me what is your parameter you said i will give you a parameter name so now you need to tell me what is the name so if i add parentheses now python says okay i'm expecting you to give me a name example annie i will give mozon for example and see what do you expect the output here will be it will be this code print hello plus name so it will be hello and the name is mozon if i run this code hello mozon and this can be anything now this can be any for example hello any okay it can be anything here you can enter any name you can enter any name let's see another example and i know it might be confusing a little bit at the beginning that's why we are going to see many examples different scenarios and then play around the code to make some errors intentionally to understand how it works so don't worry at the beginning if you feel confused that's totally normal functions can also return a value for example i am defining a new function called add and what are my parameters a and b two numbers i want to add two numbers a and b for example then colon then what do you want this function to do it need to print a plus b a plus b okay to whatever two numbers you will give me i will add them together through the word retain huh? and this word retain can be print also they are giving the same result however there is a difference and i'm going to talk about the difference later on return a and b so if i run this code there will be no errors and now if i want to call it i need to go the same level as diff because now i'm calling it is not part of the code is not part of the function now it is separate okay so here i'll say what i'll say add this is the name of the function see to call the function you simply use the function name so add then 
Python is expecting two two values a and b so I'll give him numbers I'll give Python numbers 2 and 5 and I expect the outcome to be a plus b now if I run the output will be 7 the output will be 7 okay and this is here I can take advantage I can take change the numbers anytime in my program after 100 lines of code I can just go and say add two numbers because I define this function add okay these are just simple examples here is another example of simple function that takes a single argument and returns the square of that argument so I'm defining a function called the square and I will give the, a number to Python to the code to the function and I expect it to return the square of that number so everything is okay I go down and how do we call the function by the name of the function so square then open brackets parentheses and here Python expecting one parameter one argument to be entered and it will be a number five let's say and the output we expect to be five times five twenty five okay twenty five you can change whatever you want the function to do it can be adding them together adding the number to itself or it can be dividing the number by itself or it can be mod of the number I'm just giving different examples this is not a practical maybe and the mod is zero because the remainder is zero just you can do whatever you want in the after the return or the print this is what you want the function to do so basically it's simple you define you say I want a function what do you want the function to do I wanted to multiply it by itself to have the square of that number okay to do that define for me a function called the square because the square has something to do with what the function does right you can call it whatever you want you can change it you can say anything you can say I want to call it for example fun as long you are consistent there is no problem however it's better to have a name that is related to what you want the function to do okay another function or another thing about functions they can have multiple arguments so far we are having one or two parameters two arguments now I can add three numbers for example I don't have to add only two numbers so I come here and I say add to call the function add then what are your numbers one let's say five and eight so these are numbers and the total is 14 one more last example in this video functions can have default argument so far we are entering telling the code or the program what do I want after here when I call the function but it can have also default arguments this means that if you don't provide a value for the argument when calling the function it will use the default value for example I defined a function called greet and inside it I have two parameters one is name and the other one called greeting and greeting is by default defined to hello so return I want this function to do what to do greeting to type greeting plus concatenate the name then if I print a greet alone I just greet Python expect me how many arguments here Two? no expects only one or two optional if you give only one you need to give the name because greeting is already defined to hello so name is Alice now if you override the default value hello you can say hi for example also this is acceptable so whatever you like run the code and you have to to compare the two cases if I give only one argument it will consider to name so hello Alice if I give two arguments it will be hi Bob okay because in the first case hello already defined that's why it is retained okay I know this is a lot of information take your time digest it and in the next videos we'll practice more thank you and see you soon hello everyone in this video we are going to continue our journey with the functions in Python and this time we are going to see some examples about the functions with some logic some logic and some logical statements so I have here three statements or three examples one two and three and in each example we have the solution we'll go over the question then over the solution 
and then the explanation okay explanation and sometimes in the third question i put the explanation before each step just to make sure also a different way to make things easy for us to read so let's go ahead and read the first question write a function that checks if a number is even or odd we need to check if a number is even or odd and if you remember before if you want to check a number for example let's say, let's say 34 is this number even or odd what we do there is famous way we saw it before which is dividing the number dividing the number or using the mod of the number right say num mod 2 num mod 2 and this if the result comes as 0 then the number is even right because mod means the remainder the remainder after the division so the number divided by 2 if the remainder is 0 it means the number is even so for example if i put here 30 23 and i run this code sorry this is a comment here there's no error okay let me just take it out i'll create a new code here and i will just put it up okay let me rearrange so here for example if i say this number 23 mod 2 equals 0 if i run the code false it tell me false why because 23 divided by 2 how many twos in the 23 there are 11 and the remainder is 1 the remainder is 1 and we can check that by saying 23 mod 2 run the code and the remainder is 1 so this is not even however if we say 24 now now the answer let me just remove this and I run the code now it's a true because 24 divided by 2 that's 12 and the remainder is 0 so this is important to understand we have seen it before just a quick refresh now our question write a function that checks if a number is even or odd now to write a function we know how to start right we always start with diff as definition or define and you call the function whatever you want even or odd because this is what I am checking if a number is even or odd then what parameters you will pass to this function the number right you need to pass a number to check if it's even or odd then inside the function see the indentation very important I have my if statement because I want to check if the number mod 2 equals 0 it means if the number is even then colon return even as a string return even else return odd straightforward right so here number one we know that we can use logical statements we can use if statements inside the function inside the function pay attention to the pay attention to the indentation the if belongs the whole if statement belongs to the function so it need to be inside the function okay now let's call how do we call the function how do we call the function simply by typing the name of the function even or odd brackets and here you need to pass the number and python tells you number i expect you to give me a number here right let's say 24 i will run the code and it will tell me it's even the answer right if i change it let's say 13 make sure it's working and it's odd it returns odd perfect so it is working so a few things quickly start the function with a diff keyword then name of the function you can name it whatever you want then and ideally something relates to what the function will do then the parameter or the argument inside the parentheses then colon then whatever you want your code to do whatever you want your code to do and my code i want it to do to check if a number is even or odd and then return even if the number is even and returns odd if the number is odd that's why we made it as if statement okay here is the explanation again in this example we have defined a function called even or odd even or odd that takes a single parameter num okay inside the function inside the function that's why we have the indentation we use an if statement to check if the number is even or odd if the number is even the function returns even 
if the number is odd we put it under else then the function returns odd okay and we can call the even or odd function with different arguments and see the output so here is how we call it by even or odd you always call the function by typing its name similar to the built-in functions similar to the built-in functions okay great this is the first example and here we can see that we have different things in python we are using different techniques in python we having the function definition we have logical statements if statements in this case we have num mod 2 equals 0 to check for even or odd numbers we have strings right we have many things yeah yeah whatever we are learning since the beginning these are components they are blocks we are learning to put them together to create fun to create codes programs and this is short one small one but you will see it more and more when the programs and we learn new things and our skills become helpful to do more complex programs okay the second example write a function that takes a list of a list as an argument so in the first first question it takes single element a number as argument now we want a list as an argument and returns a new list containing only the even elements of the input list so we will input a list and i want the function to return shorter list or updated list that contains only the even numbers and remove the other odd numbers so again i start with diff then the name of my function you can say whatever you want even list in this case makes sense then the parameter i will i will input is input list this is my parameter or argument input list now i will come back to the second line i will say i need for loop to iterate through the list because here will be a list inside the input list it will be a list and inside the list there are elements numbers so for each number inside the input list i would like you to check if the number is even or no how is that through the even statement if statement and i know num mod 2 equals 0 this is how we check for even then even list then what i will do i will do to my empty list here i defined an empty list called even list and this is famous technique remember it whenever you want to come back with a list with to add elements similar to our case here start by a variable call it even list and define it give it initial status with empty list empty list then you start adding how do we add to a list by using the function append or the method append right we learned this before so go to my even list which is empty today or now and append add to it a number this number must be even how do we make sure it is even by this if statement if the number is even then add it to the list and very important here you see that this line even list dot append number this is indented and it is below the if statement so implement this line which is even underscore list dot append only if the if statement is a true only if the if statement is a true after you finish all the numbers in our initial list in our input list after you check for all the numbers if they are even or no and add only the even numbers to our list then go out of the if list of the if statement and return the even list give me the even list let's see an example if i say now i want to call i want to call my function and i will say even list this is the name of the function and it is expecting me to give it a list input list here so this is my list one two three four five six if i run the code it will give me two four six it returns only two two four six so let's break it down i will start from the top this is my function i give it a list one two three two six then i started with empty list called even list and for each number in this list I'm checking it's even or no so I will start with one is it even no then I will go back to the for loop I'll go to the no second number two is it even yes then execute this line and add it to the list so it's added here as four then go back to number three four five six and do the same till you finish 
we finished all the numbers we added only the even numbers to the even list which was empty as initial status and then we exit it because we finished all the numbers and returned the even list which includes only the even numbers the indentation is very important let me go through the explanation one more time reading these comments then we will do some intentional mistakes and see what errors will come back so in this example we have defined a function called even elements even elements or even list I think I change the name later even list that takes a single parameter input list this one inside the function we have an empty list called even list this one right even list list that will be used to store the even elements of input list input list even elements then we then use a for loop to iterate over the elements of the input list for each element we check if it's even or odd using the module operator the mod if the element is even we append it we add it to the even list finally we return the even list at the end of the function now we can call the even element or the even here list function with a list of integers as an argument list of integers one two three four five six and it will return a new list containing only the even elements of the input list okay clear now let me make a few things now we said this even list dot append this should be or must be under it belongs to the if statement what if i put it out i put it similar indentation there will be an error here let me run the code and see what happens what type of error it will be expected an indented block so python tells you it must belong to the if statement what about the return what if i put the return similar as the if and run the code there will be no mistakes huh? but it will be empty list it will be empty list what else let me go back two four six now what if i forget the colons in the definition function invalid syntax because this is syntax error so the same for the for loop the same for the for loop the same for the if statements remember all definition the function definition the for loop the else statement the if statement all these need columns at the end okay what if i forget to enter here my list also closing parentheses sorry i forget one parent yes let me close it now if i run it there will be empty list right because you entered nothing so python is going to through empty list and will return empty list there is nothing what else i can do so let me go back now if i run it everything is okay number so i think it's a clear now let me go to the next example make sure the best way to study these examples is to look at the answers what i did then close the close the video or pause the video and try to do it yourself try to do it write it down it's something to understand how i did it and another thing to do it yourself it's very important to do it yourself and see where did you mistakes third example here is an example of a function in python that takes a single argument which is a list of integers and returns a new list containing only the numbers that are multiples of three more or less like the second one but has a trick so i define a function get multiples of three and I will enter some numbers here my argument or my parameter create an empty list I created an empty list because I want to return a list so I need to create an empty list as initial similar to this case even list equal empty list and here multiples of three is empty list then I will iterate through my list initial list which are the numbers here and I will say for number in numbers check if the current number is multiple of three and the similar way checking of e for even numbers i will say if the number mod or module three equals zero it means it is a multiple of three right then if it's multiple of three i will add it to the list i will append it to the list by using the dot append method and we'll add what add the number which i checked here and here if number equals or module three equals zero then return the list of the multiple of three return multiple of three 
multiples of three. Okay, this empty list, I would like to return it at the end. Now, if I run the code just initially to make sure no errors. Now, example to use. So always remember, if you want to use a function, just call the name. And the name of my function, get mult, and Python will tell you, give you the options. And then I will enter. Now see here what Python is expecting, numbers. Okay, a list of numbers. Function in Python that takes a single argument, which is a list of integers. So here I need to enter list one, six, nine. Let's start with a simple one to make sure the code is working six and nine because they are multiple of three and what if i put here four it should return six only yes it's working what if i put random numbers now and it will return these numbers okay all these numbers hmm. what a lucky okay what if i change this one to one let's see it's removed so it makes sense okay perfect now now let's see um i would like to explore a little bit if i do some mistakes so for example here i expecting me a list what if i put only one number what will happen let's say six first of all it will return six the same if i return one it will should be empty list excellent what if i enter nothing empty list it should be because there is nothing to check but i will return the initial value the initial value it's empty list so always it will be empty list what if i enter not as a list as integer only one number will it work it will be an error here what does it say integer object is not iterable aha uh -huh. this is very interesting it says you are telling me to iterate to iterate through the numbers but there is only one number here integer and the integer object is not iterable in python i cannot iterate over one integer it must be a list even it is an empty list no problem i will iterate through it so lists are iterable it how do you say that iterable integers are not this is very important very good okay now everything is okay perfect so this is a lot i know the best way is go ahead and there are many things here we learned we learned how to check again the even numbers we learned about if statement inside the function again we solidified how to define a function and how to call it how to do multiples of three here and how to again to say we have seen for loops so mix of things for loop with if statement with the function definition different things i advise you strongly to go and play around it try to make some mistakes in uh, intentionally to see the difference between the correct code and if you do any mistake so in the future if you receive similar mistake or error you know okay this is because something i did before perfect thank you very much and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone let's continue with one more lesson about the functions and this time we will do unpacking of tuples with functions so what does it mean the unpacking of tuples let's take an example here we have this list students and the elements inside the list are tuples we have alice 90 bob 60 and these are grades names and grades so the first element is a name and the second one is the grade average grade so charlie 75 dave 85 eve 95 random names random numbers okay so now if i want to do if i want to do for example i want the elements inside as tuples i want to take each tuple alone i want to extract unpack this list unpack this tu these tuples how can i do that there are different ways one way is to say okay for of course since i have a list and i want to iterate over each element i need for loop right for loop so i can start with this thing let me remove here let me say for item in students correct for item in students for each item inside my list okay do what print item let me see what is the output here it will retain the tuples so i unpacked i removed the tuples from the list itself so i have each tuple alone alice and 90. so i am unpacking i am removing each tuple and it's alone in one line now and this is using for the for loop right we saw this before briefly for loop to iterate over each element each item inside the list then just print the item and item you can call it whatever you want 
as long as it's consistent so i can add t here for example and sorry by mistake and here the item can be t must be t because it need to be consistent huh? and the same answer but t has no name no meaning so let me just make it item better okay now what if i want them separate alice alone 90 alone bob alone 60 alone and so on i can i can tell python see the items inside my list are tuples have and these tuples of course having two elements inside name and grid so what can i say instead of giving one input or one item i can say name and grid right or average the name for name and grid so python understand now okay you have two inputs you have two elements name and the grid in students do what print now i need to change item what do you want to print do you want to print the names alone then i can do that by printing the names and i have only the names you want the grids alone then we can do that also by printing the grid do you want both of them does it work let's say let's see name and the grid and it also unpack the tuple now see there see it's different here because i don't have the tuple right i have each one alone so this is unpacking unpacking the tuples now how can we do similar thing more complex things with with functions with functions imagine that i want to return the highest grade i want to return the name of the student or the best student based on the grades available and the best student is the student with the highest grade okay how can i return this is a small list so it's obvious here it's eve however if it was a huge list thousands and thousands of tuples inside it will be almost impossible or very difficult time consuming to check it manually so we need a function to do that one way to have a function to do that how to do it this is what we will do in this example now you can pause the video try yourself it's a little bit challenging which is good because it expand your knowledge and at the same time challenge you make you think more about it but pause the video try at least to start at least to start with the with the question okay at least to start with it and see what you can do can you write for example can you define the function write it correct definition can you check what do i need to use do i need to use for loop if statements both together where do i put the return and so on okay pause the video once you are ready come back and let's do it together so here what i will do i have my list the same names same grades i will define a function the name of the function tells me the best student obviously i need is better to have always as, as we said before that the name of the function relates to what you want the function to do and the argument will be students i want you to input for me names of students which is already here i can put it here i can put it down doesn't matter it's better just on the top i have my list i can enter the list again somewhere else in different scenarios but okay for now then I have these two lines I defined best student and I kept it empty here for you okay what should I put here in the place of the question marks what should I put here in the place of the question marks I must enter something here let's finish the code then you think about it now what I will do normal for as we did before here I have I need to unpack the tuples right I want to for student and average i gave two arguments student and average or student here we call them name and grade doesn't matter so here is called student and average student and average in students in this list do what if the average is higher or is larger than the highest average is if the first average 90 is larger than highest average which i defined here then do what the new highest average equals your average let's take example if your average 90 is highest than the initial value here then do what the new highest average will be 90 okay will be 90 take your time try to digest it very important and if this is true if the average is larger than the highest average then 
also the best student will be equal the student will equal the student so also here the best student equals the student if you understand the highest average equals average you will understand the second one is the same so what i'm doing here I'm checking each element if the grade is higher than the initial value then I will reassign the highest average to this to the grade to 90 then I'll go to the next 60 is it larger than highest average which is now 90 no then I will go back to the third one 75 no 85 no 95 yes it's higher then what I will do I will reassign the highest average to 95 to 95 and then after I finish all my items after I iterate using the for loop over all the items here I will exit the if statement and the last part of the for loop I will retain the best student I will retain the best student okay because what I want is the name of the best student of course you can return the grade as well so if I run this code, of course, there will be an error because I kept this empty. So see invalid syntax and there is red lines. There are red lines here for us to understand. So what do you think? What do you think should I put here? If you see the previous, if you go back to the previous uh, examples in the previous video, we put it was empty list, right? Empty list. So can we do empty list? Best student. We can. If you want, we can. So there is no error here in this line. What about highest average? What about the highest average? Now I said we can here, but there is a better option because I don't want to retain a list. I want to retain just one name. So what can I retain here? What can I type here initial? Initially empty list or none, right? I can write none. So the initial value is none. This is the base value. So I will compare now. What about the highest average? What should I put initially? Yes, zero. My initial is zero because I want just to a starting point, a placeholder for now. So I want to compare 90 high larger than the zero highest average, which is zero initially. Yes. Then the highest, uh, the highest average in new value is 90, which is the average. Okay. 90. Then I will go on and till I finish all of them. If I entered here, for example, 100, let's say, if I run the code, there will be no error, of course, but when I call the function, it will come back 100, and there is no student with the 100. We'll see it in a minute. So let me start with 0. Just run the code, no errors. Now, if I want to call the function, I will say, what's the name of your function? Best student, best underscore student, and then function, open parenthesis, and what is exp what is the function expecting me to enter students and where is your list you can enter it manually or you can just return or enter the name of the variable which is a students and now if I enter run the code the answer is Eve is Eve the highest yes 95 and the name is Eve because I asked to retain best student what if I put here 100 what will happen let's see nothing right because you are retaining the best student who's the best student best student is the one with the the best student as per this code is the one whose grade is 100 and there is no one with the grade 100 right you have just ident you just defined highest average so python will go 90 higher than 100 no any of these higher than 100 no so no name of any student will retain because you don't have any right you don't have any the same if you put 96 is the same case because the highest average is 95 any number you enter here higher than 95 will retain none will retain nothing okay that's why we always so what should what number should i enter should i enter number 50 for example you can and it will give you correct answer now if but it's dangerous if the set is large unless you are sure that the highest average is more than 50 then it will be riskier yeah? because if all of them less than 50 then no one of them will be retained that's why the safest is to enter zero to enter just zero because the lowest possible average grade the lowest possible grade is zero all of them must be higher than zero or at least zero right then you compare everything to zero you compare the first one to zero higher then you go to the next one 
perfect play around it see what can you do with again you saw the answers now pause it open your python and try to solve it again with without without looking without looking at the solution because this will help you to practice to solidify your skills to explore to see where mistakes you will do what mistakes you will do okay perfect thank you very much for joining this lesson and i will see you in the next lecture hello everyone and welcome again in this video we are going to learn something new about the functions something very interesting because it will give us more flexibility and have more power when we come and code using functions so the lesson called interaction between functions interaction between functions and so far when we used to create functions for example if i create a function let me call it add and i want to add three numbers together x y and z so these three numbers colon and i want this function to do the sum of the three numbers so return and i will say x plus y plus z so far we are seeing here the parameters here and the arguments and the code itself all these are either numbers or a list or sequence of numbers but not functions right these are integers or float these are just numbers then if i want to call the function i simply type the name then i will enter three numbers as param as argument right so th two five and seven run the code and the answer is 14 we know this one we have seen many examples similar to this one the point is these are not functions right can i make them function can i use a function here in the return in the code itself for example the minimum or the maximum or range and so on we learned many functions built-in functions or another definite defined functions the answer yes we can do that let's see how it works and this is our lesson today so interactions between functions is a key concept in programming and it's essential for writing modular and efficient codes okay there are several ways in which functions can interact in python let's see some examples first of all functions can retain multiple values using tuple unpacking or packing in this example we will see let's see the example first then we go to the explanation so i defined a function called it min max what does it do from the name it will give me the minimum and the maximum of a number of a list of numbers let's say and the argument here is numbers or the parameters numbers and what i want this function to do to return the minimum number and the maximum from where from the list of numbers here let me call this function then we comment on it so how to call the function by typing the name of the function min max then what does python expect me to enter numbers okay numbers so if i enter one number only see there will be an error right because python int object is not iterable you are asking me to go through numbers different numbers you want minimum and maximum so there is more there must be more than one entry and how do we enter more than one integer we put it in a list so one three seven eight and nine for example let's see if the function is working it retains one and nine one and nine because this is the minimum and maximum let me change this for example just make it four to make sure it's working yes one and eight minimum and maximum so my function is working and here as we note as we notice i have in the return two functions one is called min which retains the minimum of list of numbers and max which retains the max and you can you can see they are functions because their color is different as well right min and max similar to the min max the min max function color and this tells us these are built-in functions built-in already defined functions within python so this is one way to use the functions within other functions or one way to to call functions within a function also this is simple quick if i want to build one layer also what i can do i can here i can define min and max if you remember how we packed and unpacked tuples we can define two parameters or two items here minimum and maximum equals min max my function and i will enter the c the, the the list of numbers then i will say print 
minimum equals min minimum which is the first one will be the min of the numbers and maximum which is the maximum number on in the list if I run this code I will have minimum equals 1 or minimum is 1 you remember this f string very important from the previous lessons then I have 1 then maximum is 5 from where I will get minimum and maximum from the previous line min and max calls through the function min max okay and it will iterate over this list and it will find the minimum number and the maximum maximum number so in this example we have seen two functions inside one function in this example the min max function returns a tuple containing the minimum and maximum values from a list of numbers the tuple is then unpacked into separate variables minimum and maximum through these two lines through these two lines okay perfect this is one example another example functions can call other functions and in this example we are going to see two functions greet and greet everyone so define greet a function called greet and there will be a name inside it this is the parameter then what does this function do it prints hello and the name which I will return will I I will input then I define another function called greet everyone and it will take list of names okay not one name more than one name names see this is a plural here and different from name doesn't matter what you call it huh? remember doesn't matter what you call this one names but it makes sense to call it names because my input will be names list of names and then I will iterate through these names for each name in the names for each item in this list which includes include names I would like you to do what to execute this function greet name and this is where is this greet name function is the first two lines the first two lines what will this function do it will type hello name so basically what will happen if I call the function every time the function will go through each item in the list it will go to Alice and what will happen in Alice it will greet Alice how is that it will say hello Alice then Bob hello Bob then Eve hello Eve let's run the code and see the output hello Alice hello Bob hello Eve okay very good so here we have two functions this is the let's say the main function greet everyone inside it we are using another function the third example functions can return values in this example the add function okay let's explain it here the add function I defined one function called add and if I want to see what this function do it's here return x plus y it adds from the name the two parameters or arguments let's run this code first alone so I'll make everything as comment and here I will say add and then two numbers two and five and the output should be seven perfect now I will remove it and I go to the second function it's multiply multiply from the name it will multiply the two arguments inside x and y and if I want to run this code let me just make these comments as comments and here I will multiply and then three and seven the answer should be 21 perfect and now the next step is so first I define first I define two functions add and multiply then what I will do I will call the function multiply this is a function multiply I call it by the name and inside inside my arguments the first argument will be to add so multiply here look at multiply it takes two arguments right two parameters the first one the first parameter can be a function as well it can be a function which is add I defined it here so instead of just adding two numbers three and four then it will multiply them uh, the first parameter or the first argument I passed it as a function called add so what will happen here the first add will be executed the function add will be executed and it adds two numbers two and three so two plus three five then 
they will be multiplied the 5 will be multiplied by 4 let me run this code and the answer is 20 again I have two functions add sums two numbers or adds two numbers multiply multiplies these two number any two numbers they don't have to be the same by the way x y it can be a b as long it is consistent we'll try it now then multiply i will call this function now let's see multiply and i open a bracket and this c python asks me for what it needs two numbers right x any number and y any number it can be any number or any function as well right as we see here so here i will say okay i don't want to pass numbers let me pass numbers first and see the result sorry i need to comment this this three times five 15 perfect now what if i change it now here i say okay i don't want to pass you a number i want to uh, pass a function so the function can be two and let's say nine so two na times nine 18 plus five no two plus because this is add it will add 2 plus 9 that's 11 11 times 5 that's 55 55 can i do the opposite also can i the first parameter or argument i pass it as a number and the second one pass it as a function let's see so this is add and add what add 2 and 6 so what will happen here multiply multiply the first parameter 2 times the second one the second one is a function will add two numbers inside it two plus six that's eight eight times two the answer should be 16 the answer should be 16 Momtas. okay perfect now let's try one thing i would like to change this as b and this as a and then here need to be consistent of course a and b will it no a and B will it work the same right doesn't matter what you call them they don't have to be the same as the previous one as long as long you are consistent everything is okay okay perfect now let's go to the last one functions can be passed as arguments to other functions similar but a little bit more let's say complex in this example we have first function defined as apply operation and it takes how many arguments or how many parameters three a b and operation then it will return returns what what this function will do it will return operation a and b now so far operation what we don't know what is this so let's continue then the second function defined as add add two numbers by the name multiply it will multiply two numbers then here what will happen let's see example I will call my function apply operation and it will tell me how many parameters I need three arguments a b and operation so the first one is a number a passed three another number integer then multiply the operation here I am telling Python this is a function this is a function called multiply so what will happen here what will happen is first of all we will take two then the three and do the operation for them what is the operation is to multiply them together because here apply operation says multiply my function inside it multiply so it will multiply two times the three two times the three i will run the code and the answer is the answer is sorry because it takes the last one so i need to make this as a comment first and run the code now two times the three is six correct now if i make changes and now i will comment the first one the second one will be run so apply operation now it says add and add is a function is an operation okay it's a function and this function will add two numbers x and y so the answer here should be five five again the names multiply add operation you can call them anything see and if you want operation as long you are consistent this is i can call it item and here operation I call it item what else and if I run everything is okay it will be the same doesn't matter what you call it it doesn't matter what you call it but because we are doing an operation oh, operation then it's better or ideally the name should give you a hint what you are going to do I'm going to do an operation what is the operation it's a function multiply or add multiply or add okay now what else multiply add 
what else we can do also be careful with the errors if you forget the colon there will be error syntax error invalid syntax what else um, we here we need three three arguments if I remove one what will happen is it type error type error because you are asking for three but you are giving us only two so also this is wrong what if I add another number here let's say five what will happen also there is an error because you cannot call this one right we need ex expecting a function here in your main function up in the function apply operation you are telling me you will call operation a b and this is a function okay this is a function but you are giving me int integer so this is not callable so this must be operation sorry this must be one of these two functions add for example add as a function and everything should be okay can I put a function from outside for example min can I put min what will happen if I put min this experiment and of course it is it will give you the minimum right it will give you the minimum but in this case you are not using either of these two functions okay you are not using either of these two functions okay so let me keep it add and it's using the first one five okay perfect so this is these are some examples how to use functions within functions or with other functions okay functions interaction very important try to do as many examples as you can pause the videos write these codes yourself without looking and then come back and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this video we are going to overview some questions to practice our understanding and our skills in python functions about python functions so what we will do i will go over all the questions we have one two three four five six seven questions about python functions and then in the next video we are going to go over the solutions as usual please try your best to solve these questions they should be relatively easy and doable so try your best to do them even if you receive some errors look what is the type of the error try to solve it if you still can't come back to the solution video and don't uh, don't feel overwhelmed or a problem it's totally fine the best way to learn is to make mistakes but you have to start coding so you can make mistakes and you learn from them so let me go over the questions the first one write a function that takes in two numbers as arguments and returns their sum what will be the output of the function when you call it with the numbers 3 and 4 so manually we can do it right but we want the function we want python code so question number two write a function that takes in a list of numbers in this case and returns the average of the numbers and what will be the output if we take a list 1 2 3 4 5 question number three write a function that takes in a string and retains a copy of the string with all vowels removed all vowels removed what will be the output if we take hello world as our string question number four write a function that takes in a dictionary and retains a list of all the values in the dictionary what will be the output of the function when you call it with the dictionary a1 b2 and c3 remember dictionary has key and value right we didn't see any example for dictionaries try to do it yourself and see what you will get next question write a function that takes in a number and returns it true if the number is even and false if the number is odd this should be easy right straightforward we have seen similar question what will be the output if the number is seven write a function next question that takes in a list of strings and returns a new list with all the strings in uppercase again we have seen similar cases and what will be the output if your list is a b c and the last question write a function that takes in a string and returns the string with all its letters in reverse order in reverse order what will be the output if our string is python okay perfect the questions more or less are straightforward a little bit maybe need some work however they are not that difficult 
in any case in any case do your best to solve them and don't worry if you get any errors or mistakes or you stuck okay at least you should be able to write the first line of code for each of them for all of them the definition of the function right def the name of the function parentheses and colon okay perfect i will see you in the next video with the solutions welcome everyone Let's go ahead and see the solutions for our assignment or for our test on functions in Python. So the first question was write a function that takes n two numbers as argument and returns their sum. Then call the function apply it when the numbers are three and four. So here since I said write a function then I know immediately I need a function and start the syntax with def right def and then give it a name define your function give it a name and what's the name of my function it has something to do with the purpose of this function which is returning the sum so adding the number so I will add how many numbers I need how many arguments I need inside two numbers so I need x y okay for example call it whatever you want call it num1 num2 item1 item2 a b whatever you like then i know i need colon then enter and the indentation happen if you wrote the first line correct then indentation will happen automatically by python and here i will write return <coughs> excuse me and then what do you want your function to do what is the purpose of the function is to add two numbers together right is to sum them so i will say return x plus y right this is what i want my function to do finish this is the definition of my function i give it a name add i give the arguments x and y because when i call it how many arguments you want how many parameters you want inside two then i will define what the function i will say what the function wants to do it's sum to sum x and y then if i want to call the function simply i call it by its name makes sense right add and then x and y so here python tell, tell, is telling me give me two two items two numbers x and y and here i will say for example three and four because the question asks me for three and four so this is three and four and the answer should be seven okay seven see x and y three and four but imagine that i want to a set of number a list of numbers sorry a list of numbers so i don't know how many numbers inside there will be a list of numbers the same way diff add this is extension for the question is not there in the question but i would like to highlight it just to make sure so i will just put x or i will just put item or i will put numbers okay then colon then return return what return add in this case add is not defined so i will say sum sum okay because sum is a built-in function sum is a built-in function in this case i can use it and i can put what the numbers sum the numbers i want you to sum the numbers perfect now if i call it i will say add call your function main function add add what now python is expecting what one enter one entry okay and here i of course need to add in this case a list one two three four five for example and run the code and the answer is 15 so see the difference between the two cases the first case the first part i just used defined a function and the input here the the arguments inside are just numbers integers in this case however in the second case <coughs> sorry i defined the function then the argument inside is a list and i used within the code of the function another function so this is interaction between two functions and this is a built-in function sum okay this is the first question let's go to the second one write a function that takes okay without reading the question write a function then this is def then i want to give it a name the name based on what let me see you have flexibility however make make it related to the purpose of the function takes in a list of numbers and returns the average of numbers so define i will say the average because this is what we want and then open brackets parentheses and inside it you want list of numbers right you want the numbers takes a list of numbers so i put list of numbers do you need colon yes then enter once you click enter or hit enter the indentation will happen happen automatically then i want here return return what i want to return the average now what is the average if you basic mathematics the average equals the sum over the length 
okay the sum of the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by how many numbers are there 1 2 3 4 5 numbers right so for example let me just put it to explain the average it's basic thing just to make sure for example if you have two numbers 3 and 5 or let's say yes 3 and 5 these are two numbers if I want the average I'll say 3 plus 5 8 divided how many items how many numbers are there 2 so 8 divided by 2 the answer is 4 okay now let me go back here so I want to say here I want to the, the sum of the items um, sum of these items so sum built in function and sum of what sum of the numbers divide by the length how many items five items and this is the length of the item of the list right length of numbers correct that's it now let me run the code just to make sure no errors are there everything is okay now i need to call my function average and then open parentheses and python will tell me you need a list of numbers so my list is one two three four five one two three four five run the code and the answer will be 3 because 1 plus 2, 3 plus 3, 6 plus 4, 10 plus 5, 15. 15 divided by 5, that's 3. Okay, I'll remove this one. We move to the next question. Write a function that takes in a string and returns a copy of the string with all vowels removed a little bit more. What is the output of the function when you call hello world? Okay, so take a function diff immediately. Then what does it do? takes a string retains copy of the string with all vowels removed remove vowels i called the function okay and i call the string as s okay this is my parameter argument inside then i need to define i need to define the vowels because i will use this later in my code so now return 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 what return and look at this let's take it step by step this is a little bit more complicated not difficult but not straightforward let's say this is what do we call it if you remember this is list comprehension right write it writing a list in one line so c for c and s so s is my string c is a character so for any character in my string return this one if the character is not in vowels is not in my vowels string so i defined my vowels a e i o and u and small and capital letter lower and upper cases then i said go ahead and for each letter in my string hello world add it if it's not in the vowels string and here I put join join will join the letters will join and instead of keeping spaces between I just added join and I started with what I started with a string empty string so my starting point is empty string then I said join to this empty string every letter in my hello world that is not in the vowels make sense see this is a new thing maybe not in. we saw we have seen n now not in okay this is n this is not n and whenever you are using list comprehension the f goes after after okay unless you have else and lf it goes before if you are not sure about the list comprehension go back to the lesson on that and study it quickly then come back here so then I will call my function remove vowels remove vowels what is your input it's or let's say what is your string hello world and if I run the code it will remove the EO and O so HLL word okay perfect the next question write a function that takes in a dictionary in this case and retains a list of all the values in the dictionary retains all the values in the dictionary values remember a dictionary this is a sample a1 b2 c3 a dictionary takes a key the first part colon then value key value key value so i have one two and three these are values these are values i want to return only the values what is the output of the function when you call it with the dictionary a1 b2 c3 so write a function then i need def then give a name get values or return values or values values of what what is your input a dictionary i will input a dictionary then return what do you want your function to do to return a list correct return a list and I defined it as a list my output I want it to be as a list 
and what is import inside how do we call the functions the 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 dictionary's values the name of the dictionary dot values okay so this is this should be clear from dictionaries make sure you go back to that lesson if you are not sure about it then i define these values in a list i put them in a list then i just simply call the function get values and inside i put a dictionary a1 b2 c3 okay run the code and my list is one two three one two three perfect if i want the keys then i need to change it to keys this one okay for example keys run the code and i retain the keys okay perfect let's go to the next question now and the question says write a function that takes in a number and retains it true if the number is even and false if the number is odd and this is straightforward so write a function i have def then define the name give it a name is even okay i call it is even or anything you can call it even not odd whatever you like then inside you will need your argument or parameter then what does it do this function returns if the number is even or no and this is very famous we have seen it very uh, often we have seen it many times the number mod 2 equals 0 means it's even okay now checking for 7 and it's false let me make sure it's working if i put 8 run the code true perfect okay the next question write a function again write a function def and give it a name what is the name that takes in a list of strings and returns a new list with all the strings in uppercase so i will call it upper or to upper then inside there are strings list of strings list of strings so return i need strings right i need strings inside i need strings so what i will say i will say dot upper because i know dot upper this function makes the letters uppercase and for any what i did any letter i call it s call it item call it character call it c whatever you like so i make it capital letter okay or uppercase and this is for what for any letter inside my strings for any letter inside my strings okay for any letter inside my strings so again this is list comprehension and inside the list comprehension i have a function okay so what does it say make every letter uppercase in inside my strings inside my strings so any letter in my strings what to do make it up capital letter or upper case so let's run this string and abc what if i change this one for example hello it will be capital as well okay so this is straightforward these are small different ideas the, the main structure is the same you have def give it a name inside you have your parameters then return then call the function the trick always most of the time is what do you want to do what is the code okay i want to make it upper then upper upper four you need to iterate over the list you need to iterate on your list this is my list i need to iterate it means i need for loop right and i made it in side a list comprehension of course you can write it in different lines if you don't want list comprehension but this is straightforward one line and it looks nice and readable and the next and last one write a function def that takes in a string and retains the string with all its letters in reverse order then i need reverse uh, this is the name makes sense and then my parameter is s or string or whatever you want and then return return what return the reverse we saw maybe this one briefly before how do we make any string in a reverse order or how to make reverse as having this indexing right we say colon so take from the very beginning all the items inside my string till when till another colon it means till the end so from the beginning till the end then minus one minus one makes reverse this is also we so it before in very early i think in the strings lesson so make sure you go back there to revise if you are not sure how this works but basically it says take all the items inside your string from the beginning till the end 
and then reverse them minus one means reverse them and do this to what to your s to your parameter and then i call the function reverse and what is your function what is inside your function or what is the input is python if i run this one it should be reversed it should be reversed and in oh typ okay so each question has a small let's say idea has a new idea this is uh, adding two numbers basic this is average you need to know what is the average it's the sum over the number of items and the number of items in python we can get it by using the len function then this question we need the vowels and this is list comprehension we saw the dot join method okay then here we saw the get the values of a, a dictionary and the values let me just put this one as it was values not to confuse you the values as we use the dot values method and then we see the even this is easy we have seen it many times and then we saw the uppercase method upper and make sure you understand the list comprehension and the for loop and the last one we saw we have seen as the reverse the reverse how to reverse and this is the small idea colon colon minus one okay perfect thank you very much i hope you learned from this uh, video make sure to do it yourself take the questions again make it yourself make sure you understand it see where are the uh, mistakes you are or the errors you are receiving and correct it by watching the video again and again until you are comfortable with it thank you very much and i will see you in the next video hello everyone in this lecture we are going to learn about map functions in python map functions in python the next lecture we are going to go over the filter function and then the lambda function these are important functions and they work sometimes together so i don't want to read this now i will read it at the end the explanation let me explain the map function through two examples then we come back and read to make sure we understand so here's an example <coughs> sorry for using the map function to square the numbers in a list so i have a list one two three four five called numbers and i want to square each element each item inside each number inside this list i can of course write a for loop and iterate <coughs> on each number inside but that will be longer a little bit and more complex than using the map function and if you have more complex lists, let's say, or iterables, then it will be difficult as well. And your code will not be the most, let's say, efficient code. So the map function is a built-in function inside Python that allows you to do operations to iterate over items inside a list by using the function. How does it work? Let me show you an example to make things clear. So I defined a function called the square because these numbers the items inside numbers a list i want to square each one of them so what i will do i define a function called square i can call it whatever i want but since i want to square the numbers i call it square makes sense then i will return the square this is what i want to do right i want to square each item inside the list so i squared i square them here then simply you call your map function map function you open parentheses then what do you do you write the name of your function which is a square this is the function we defined then comma then the name of your list which is numbers right numbers so you have the map function then square this is the name of your defined function then the name of the list okay this is important then if you run the code it will give you it will not give you the output it will give you the name of it will give you it will tell you that you have a map function and this is where it is stored okay to call the function the map function and to get the output the square the squares of one two three four five then you need to put it inside the list why is that because the output of the map function is iterable is iterable is a list okay in this case so if i run the code now you have one four nine sixteen twenty five which are the squares of one two three four five okay <clears throat> very important again i define the function where i what i want this is what i want to do to the list to square each item then i have my list then i simply call the function by putting it inside a list okay another way to do that i can just simply instead of a list i can say for item n then map right what i want to do i want to print the item 
also that will work because you need to iterate right one four six nine sixteen twenty five the same answer but here it's not a list so both are the same result more or less but i prefer it's easier to have it inside just inside the list like that list and the output i need to remove this and one more and everything is okay one four six nine sixteen twenty five okay L now let's read what is written here then we'll go to another example where we'll see the map function with a string so the map function in python applies a given function applies a given function which is a square in this case to each item of an input list this is my input list so i apply this function to this list to each item in this list and returns an iterator of the results very important iterator it's a list the output is a list the function is applied to each item of the list each item will be applied to by the function square one at a time and the result are returned as a new iterator which is a list in this case okay makes sense okay another example would be taking a list of string and converting them to uppercase let's see i have a string list hello world right i have this list and i want to convert each letter to uppercase so simply what i do let me i define a function called uppercase you can put any function you want any name then i will say that for the items I need to take string a list of strings right and i will return the uppercase i will return the uppercase how i return the uppercase my function is x dot upper x dot upper right so here is it's important what you want to do to the list you define it after the return here i want upper here i want it square okay here i want it square so what if I run this map then I put the name of my function upper under square case then I run this code it will give me that sorry there is an error map must have at least two arguments yes because I have this is my function and here I need my string list okay this is good let's see the error again if I run the function it tells me the map function must must have at least two arguments so i have one argument which is my function then i have my string underscore list and now if i run the code it will give me that you have a map function at this place and then if i put it inside a list then it will give me hello world capitalized capitalized upper cases okay upper cases what can we see as errors in this case what if i just make this x if it's not clear if i run the code also hello world does it make don't worry about what was written it's just you can keep it anything you can as long it's the name is consistent you have x x here okay you can call it letter for example or you can call it n i just want to show you that doesn't matter what you call it here right as long you are consistent n n the output must be the same will be the same hello world okay and you can do any anything you want anything you want inside the function whatever you want to do to this list you can define it inside your function so to summarize to use the map function you need a list or iter iterable, iterable item like tuple or a list for example then you need a function define a function and the function will do what will do what you want to do to the list okay perfect this is the map function in the next video we are going to learn about the filter function thank you very much and see you soon welcome everyone in this video we are going to continue with more functions built in functions and this time with the filter function in python and what does it do the filter function in python is used to filter a sequence of elements sequence of elements like a list and how does it do that by applying a given function given function you define a function to each element and returning only this is the catch here returning only the elements for which the function is it true so you will iterate over the list you will check this list and 
if the function defined here is a true applies to that item inside the list it will retain that item okay let's make an example or two and make it clear for us so i have the list called numbers one two three four five and for each item here i want to use the filter function to get only the even numbers so i want to output to retain only the even numbers in this list how can i do that i can use the filter function how do i do the how do i use the filter function i need to define a function let me write first i want to do it this way so i will say filter and inside the filter you need to input two arguments similar to the map the first one is your function which i don't have let me just write here anything just xxx of course this is not a name i'll change it and the second argument is your list the second argument is your list numbers here so you need to do something to the numbers you need to do what you need to recheck if the numbers if the items inside numbers are even or is even you just return it you just return it so what do you do here you need to define a function that checks if the number is even and this is easy define is even this is the name of my function and we have seen many times how to define a function to check for even numbers by saying my number x in this case mod 2 equals or true equals 0 right which check, which is checking if the remaining after the division is zero or not this is the way to check if a number is even this is very important and here i will write my function is underscore even okay and now if i run the code it will give me that you have a filter similar to the map you have filter at this store it stored in this location and then i will just put it inside list do you remember why we put it inside the list because the output is iterator and i run the code now and i have the output two and four let me explain it again so i have this list i want to check the numbers inside i want to retain i want to output i want to print on the screen only the numbers inside this list that are even that are even so what i do i define a function i define a function that will check for even numbers and you call the function whatever you want diff is even then you have one argument inside which is the item one item x then you use this very famous equation let's say or formula x mod 2 equals zero and the output of course for this will be a boolean right either true or false now one is it even no then i will not use it two is it even yes then i will print it out okay how do i do now how do i use the filter function simple i write fi filter then two arguments the first one is even this is the name of my function and the second one is my the name of the list the first one is the name of the function second one is the name of the list and put them inside the list to have the output another example let's filter out all the words that contain the letter e so i have this list hello word goodbye okay and i call this string list it doesn't matter then i want to just filter out the word that contains e i want any word that in contains e i want to remove it i don't want it i want only to print out to print on the screen only the words that ha doesn't have the letter e okay so i define a function called filter underscore e doesn't matter the name again i keep repeating this then what does it do returns e not in x not n we have seen it before so check is e not in my x and my item inside the list so what will happen here the function will iterate over this list is there a letter e in this word hello yes then i will not print it because i'm checking not in word doesn't include e so i will print it out let me run the code and the output is word right and how do i print it out now we are familiar with that we just write the filter function inside it i write first argument as the function name filter underscore e and the second argument after the comma will be the name of the list which is a string list and i put everything inside a list inside a list to have because it's iterate, iter iterated now what if i want to just to print out the words that includes includes or contains the letter e simply i remove the not run the code and i will have hello goodbye right hello goodbye so whatever you want to do to the list just define it here inside the function after the return word after the return 
okay easy now if you understood the map function this is the same way but the difference is the filter function will check for true or false is this condition true if it's a true then it will be printed out this condition applies to this word no they will not be printed out and so on okay thank you very much practice it a little bit next lecture we are going to see the lambda function and mix it with different functions thank you and see you soon welcome everyone in this video we are going to learn about the lambda function in python so a lambda function in python is a small anonymous function that is defined using the lambda keyword so first thing is lambda is a keyword built in reserved in python and is reserved for this function which we will see what does it do and here two other points it's a small anonymous function okay what does it mean it's used to create small throw away function throw away function means one time use one time use you cannot call it again and again lambda functions can take any number of arguments but can only have one expression okay we'll explain this through some examples let's see the syntax of the lambda function so this is the syntax you start with the lambda keyword and see the color of the lambda keyword is different then you have an argument we'll see some examples colon then expression okay let me comment this and let me show you some examples so before that the lambda keyword is used to define the lambda function because this is reserved built-in keyword then the argument after the lambda keyword is the input value that the lambda function takes they are separated by commas if there are multiple arguments so this is one thing we need to know lambda function can take many arguments then you have the colon then the expression is a single line of code that the lambda function runs okay it's what the lambda function retains when it is called we'll see some examples one thing important to note you can have many arguments after the lambda but you can have only one expression only one expression so let's see some examples quickly I have lambda this lambda then I have my argument x then colon then what is the code will, be, will that will be run x square 2 so what does this function do obviously it squares a number simply squares a number and I call this a square I give it a variable name so I can call it later right so if I say here for example square 5 and I square that the output should be 25 right should be 25 T sorry because I need to put it at the end or alternatively alternatively I can just say print if I say print here or just put it the last line what I mean is because if you put it before other lines of code it will not give you the output and un unless you put the code inside the print you are telling Python print it for me okay now this is one thing another function also we can see another use of lambda I can say okay X this is my argument and then for each X check if it's even or not right this is famous for checking even this is my expression so the the argument is X and the expression checking for even and the output here what do you think the output will be either true or false when I call this function if I say is even sorry what did I do here is even then I put inside the stick 8 for example it's even so the answer should be or the output should be true if I make it 9 the output should be false because double equal sign this is boolean right and the last one here as example we have lambda function retains the first letter of a string retains the first letter of a string so I have the lambda then I have my argument colon then I have the index right the expression which is index of the string the first index which is zero and I called it first letter and if I say first underscore letter and I say first letter of you you need to put a string right you need to put a string here for example if I say hello let's try and the output will be H right if I need the let's say <coughs> the last one I can say minus one and the output should be O okay just to confirm it is working so this is the lambda let's see more examples more a little bit more complex examples here's an example of using lambda function to square a number we have seen this one 
then here is an example of using lambda function to filter even numbers filter see now i can mix i can mix the lambda with the filter functions that's why you studied functions filter function before so i have a list of numbers one two three four five i have a lambda lambda what does it do here it's just this ticket part step by step this is my function we said the filter function is a built-in function if you are not sure about the filter function please review the previous video about the filter function it takes two arguments the first argument is a function and the second one is a list or any iterable item tuple can be so i have a function and in this case my function is lambda function what does the lambda function do it checks it checks if a number is even or no right it checks where in the list called numbers then i don't need the print here i can just simply make it a list oops sorry so what i can do here even numbers i call my function this is my or my variable i called it here this is my even numbers and i need to put it inside list right and if i run this code it will give me, me the even numbers only it will give me only the even numbers very good okay then also i can use lambda function as argument to other functions like map and filter similar to the above case so imagine that i have string list another case hello world then uppercase string equals map i use it with map here and as you remember the map the map function takes two arguments the first one is a function in this case it is lambda function what does it do it takes the argument x and it the expression here what it will do the code will be making it uppercase okay and then where now we go to the second part of the map function which is the second argument which is the string list this is my list so for this uh, string list do what do the lambda function make it uppercase okay so if you remember in the map function what we used to do we used to define a function here we used to say diff then we say upper for example then we say the arguments right it will take for example string or x or whatever and then we say here four and we continue for each item inside correct this is if you want to use for for loop or we used to say return x dot upper right and so on then we call the map function then so we defined a function this is one way to do it define a function but if you want to use it only one time and you throw it away again uh, later you don't want to use this code upper like to make the upper case of the strings often in your code in your program then you can use it only one time you want to use it only one time then you throw it away one time use then use the lambda no need to define a function and like define upper and use the arguments separate you can just use it in one line simple like this lambda the argument colon then your expression okay and put it inside the map then we define it as uppercase string and then we put it inside the list because we know the map is the map function is iterable it works on iteration so the output will be hello world in uppercase okay in uppercase can i do this one okay let me do this one if i take this map now this is the previous just to test the understanding if i put list here what will happen what will happen is the same right should be the same if i run the code it's the same right so no need to define a name here uppercase string then you put list of uppercase instead of the name here just put the whole thing if you want if you want to make it easier and just more readable maybe just define it so it depends how long and how complete complex and another things to see other examples i can use the lambda with filter as we have seen string list i have hello world goodbye this is my list then i need to filter filter what based on what based if e is part of the string or not i need filter then my function is lambda we have seen this function before x then colon e not in x then my list is the string list right my string list then i just simply call it and here should retain the word right 
if you are not sure about this example we have seen it before in the filter okay it's exactly the same but in the previous examples in the previous video when we learned about the filter we defined a function separately to give me the not in x okay go back to the previous video please and make sure you understand it if it's not clear now we are just explaining the lambda the lambda here this for this code we are showing that lambda can be used as argument inside other functions like filter like map so lambda functions can be useful when you need a small throwaway function like these cases for one time use for one time use or when you need to pass a function as an argument for a higher or to a higher order function like these cases okay this is the lambda function it's important you will need it make sure you understand it practice a little bit and i will put for you some examples and assignments so you can practice more thank you very much so we have finished now the lambda filter and map functions important functions good ones and they can be useful see you in the next video hello and welcome everyone again and in this lesson we are going to start to learn about object oriented programming object oriented programming or oop let's just take take it step by step in this video i am going to explain the overall concept and some important terms and concepts about the oop and then take one example see one example and in the next videos we are going to dive in take more examples and play with it and do many exercises okay let's start oop allows for the organization of code into smaller reusable components making it easier to build maintain and scale software so it's basically building blocks let's say that are readable and scalable and also reusable we are going to see all of that don't worry don't overwhelm yourself now just try to listen and digest as much as you can at this stage is a little bit confusing will not be very clear so don't worry about it so in other words oop is a way to create and use objects which are instances of classes to structure and organize code making it more readable and easier to understand so this is the objective this is the reason we are using object oriented programming to make it more readable to make it more easier to understand the scalable software to uh, to to make uh, the components reusable okay some key concepts in object oriented programming the first thing is classes we are going to see classes objects attributes and methods okay let's see one by one classes or a class is a template or a blueprint for creating objects it defines the attributes and behaviors that the objects created from it will have okay a little bit not uh, very clear at this point once we see the examples it will be more clear think about a class as a blueprint or a map or let's say imagine that you want to build a house you need a map right you need drawings you need a blueprint for the house to be built uh, uh, according to this uh, drawing so this is the class okay this is the overall let's say the blueprint this is your map the the general idea the general view of your code okay the general the general concept of the code for example you could create a class called car car is the class your class this uh, in this case and that this class defines the attributes of the car what attributes for example it's make it's japanese let's say model toyota color black and behaviors such as starting the engine honking and horn and so on honking the horn and other attributes so this is the class the class is the blueprint of creating the projects or the objects inside your project objects an object is an instance of a class okay it's an instance of a class it has its own unique set of attributes and behaviors that are defined by the class for example you could create an object called my car so we have the class called car my object is my car that is an instance of the car class my car would have its own make model and color so you define the overall class which is a car then you go and create some objects one object called my car and this my car had has its own make model color and so on you can create another object called let's say car number two car number three and it will have its own unique attributes then we have attributes attributes are the characteristics or properties of an object 
they can be thought of as variables that hold data for example the car class could have attributes for the make model and color so when you come and you say toyota black um, japanese all these are attributes okay methods methods are the behaviors or actions that an object can perform they can be thought of as functions that are associated with an object so you have the object you need uh, to you need to perform right you need to perform certain code certain actions think about it as functions we are going to see all of these in examples for example the car class could have methods for starting the engine and honking the horn okay how does it look the object oriented programming it looks like this you define the class first you call class and as you can see class word is in blue color because it's uni it's built in word for or reserved word in python and i called it car and i can put brackets here no problem car sorry just need to be this way. oops sorry this is in arabic so i need to change it in english yes now just the parentheses okay so class car for example then the colon at the end then you start with div you need to define and usually you start with this unique we are going to talk about it underscore underscore init method underscore underscore okay underscore underscore init underscore underscore this is most of the time you will see it in the class we are going to discuss it then parentheses inside the first word you put self we are going to talk about it as well always self you can add anything here but as a convention and it's easier for everyone to understand even other programmers when they read your code they will understand the word self if you put something else it will be confusing so just stick to self then comma then you add here what you want make the make of the car the model of the car and so on okay then you go self.make because self.make equals make we are going to explain self.model equals model so self. Dot whatever you put here make self.model okay make and model then we define what my car equals car this is instance my car my underscore car equals car car is my class here correct and inside I will define the information I will put the information so Toyota is equivalent to the make Camry is equivalent to the model okay so Python understands by default the first input here will be for the make the second one for model self is not considered here okay self we use it to call here and to use it to define but later we'll talk about it now if you want to call for example i'll say my car let me make this first of all one by one if i run this code what will happen i will have output with just give it a second because the first time we run it now so it's supposed to give me my car dot make and the make is toyota so i should have toyota okay and then when i run the model it will give me Camry so here is it here it is my car dot make is Toyota my car dot model now let me comment this and uncomment this run the code again and the output should be Camry okay okay perfect now till now we are just highlighting theoretical information don't worry about it too much this is theoretical we are going to dive in so let's break down this example In this example car is the class we said the class and car it's the class it's a blueprint for template for creating objects we are going to create objects we'll talk about them my car is an object see my car this is an object okay this is an object okay my car this is an object it is an instance of the class and has its own unique set of attributes toyota and camry okay make and model are attributes of the object my car make and model are the attributes 
They are characteristics or properties of the object and they can be accessed using the dot notation. See, we access them using the dot notation. So we said my car, my object, dot the model. Okay, if you add more, we can add more. Okay, now if I say my underscore car, then once you press dot, you have the options with your attributes. You have the make and model. If I add more here, it will appear here. Okay. Now, where are we? They are characteristics or properties of the object and they can be accessed using the dot notation. My car dot make and my car dot model respectively. The underscore underscore init underscore underscore is a method of the class car. It's a method of the class car. It's special method that is called when an object of the class is created and it's used to initialize the object's attributes. Okay, we use it to initialize, to connect the class with the objects. Okay, and this is reserved in Python. Okay, you see the color. In this example, the class car defines two attributes. I have class, I have two attributes, make and model. So two attributes and a method called init and an object which is my car, okay? And an object of the class car is created. The init method is called to initialize the object. After that, the attributes of the object can be accessed and used. Okay, it takes time to digest these ones, okay? It might be overwhelming now. It is because it's not straightforward. There are too many information. Don't worry about it. The self keyword, again, here, let's go explain the self keyword. What about it? Is used within a class method to refer to the current object. It's a convention in Python to use self as first argument of a class method, but you can use any other name. We said you can use anything here, but it's a convention in Python. Everyone understand it, so stick to it. Don't change it, otherwise might be confusing. The edit method is a special method in Python that is called when an object of a class is created, okay? It's used to initialize the object's attribution. The edit method takes the self keyword as the first argument. Where is it? In it, first argument is self. Okay, perfect. Then, which is a reference to the current object being created. In the example I provided before, define init self make model init method takes two arguments make and model and the self keyword which is used to initialize the object again attributes self dot make equals make and self dot model model so these are attributes okay the init method is automatically called when an object of the class is created perfect and it allows you to set the initial state of the object it's a convenient way to set the object attributes without having to write separate code to set them. Mm -hmm. You can consider init method as a constructor of a class. Don't worry about it if you don't know what is a constructor. It's called when an object of the class is created and it allows you to set the initial state of the object. Okay, all these more or less. Okay, now at least at least what I want from you to know the general structure class. Then you write any name of the class. In this case is a car parenthesis colon then diff in it parenthesis start with self then whatever attributes self dot the attributes equals the same so make 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 three times model 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 i would like you just to look at it digest it kind of memorize it more or less we will understand by doing many examples then we created a, 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 an object an object here and the object starts or calls upon the class name car okay so here car will accept two arguments make and model make and model not three self will not be counted okay perfect this is an overview next exercises or next videos we are going to see more examples and practice more just to make sure we understand what are the object oriented programming uh, attributes classes objects and methods thank you very much and see you shortly welcome everyone Let's continue with the object pro object oriented programming and in this video we are going to see three examples. My goal is to show you as many examples as possible step by step gradually to able you to enable you to digest the idea of the OOPs. And don't feel overwhelmed because this is a confusing concept especially at the beginning, but with the time it will make sense and you will make more sense 
by understanding the objective of it and when you see it in bigger programs okay so the first example is a class called dog second one so i have here the code then the same code but with some comments for explanation and then second example is car class and the third example person class okay person class okay so the class dog i defined a class called dog and remember how you define a class how to create how to initiate a class you write the word class then dog and here one thing important i didn't mention in the last video that the class name conventionally starts with the d starts with the capital sorry not with the d with a capital letter in this case capital d uppercase okay uppercase then the second line your diff and the init method this is init method you start with it then parentheses parentheses self start with self then give whatever attributes you want so the dog might have name age breed whatever you want to define then call the attributes or let's say assign the attributes self.name to name and self.age to age that's it that's it then you create an object this is an object dog one so i created the class then i want to create object from this class which is dog one because my class is dog so i need <coughs> dogs right <coughs> so dog one equals <coughs> sorry dog this is my class then inside how many attributes i need i have one two name and age so i need to enter name and age fido and three so let's just let me show you so once i print dog and i open the parentheses python will tell me you need name and age name and age so name it's a string so fido and age is let's say three okay that's it i run the code everything is perfect no errors now if i want to call it i say dog one this is the name of my object how do i call this object by that dot method dot method then python will tell me okay you have two attributes age and name which one you would like to call i would like to call the age then now if i run the code it will give me the age which is a three okay if i do the same dog one dot then python will tell me name is there and run the code it will be fido this is the name okay perfect let's see the explanation so define a class called dog class dog okay perfect so you might have a homework or you might have assignment or you might have an interview question and it gives you only the comments and you need to do the code right so define a class how do you define a class by writing the word class then the name of the class dog in this case parentheses and two uh, or colon a colon and the name of the class with a capital then the init method is a special method that is called when a new object is created from the class it's used to initialize the attributes of the object as we mentioned in the previous lesson so i how do i put it def to define right underscore underscore init underscore underscore parentheses start with self always then the attributes name and age self dot name to name equals name this is an attribute to store the name of the dog the name of the dog and then self dot age equals age attribute to store the age of the dog to store the age of the dog create an instance next step of the dog called dog one dog one is an instance dog my class then inside the name and the age which were the attributes name and age access the name how do we access by dog one dot name access the age dog dot age okay a print just to print both of them so if i run the code i will have both of them here fido and three this example demonstrates how to define a class called dog and how to create an instance of that class okay the class has two attributes name and age both are passed when creating an instance of the class the init method is a special method that is called when a new object is created from the class it's used to initialize the attributes of the object now the class has no methods so far but it could have and this is what we are going to see in the next videos let's see one more example or two more examples example two i have in this case car class class car parentheses colon def init method start with self put your attributes in this case i have three attributes make model and year self dot make to make equals make this attribute is to store the make of the car for example toyota 
self.model and here I'm following the same self.make self.model self.tier and just write make model here don't define or don't give a name for the make here don't say self.make equals Toyota no self.model Camry no here you just repeat the same self.make equals make this is how Python works okay and the OOPs and then create an instance my car my underscore car it's part is an instance of the class car and inside I need to enter now the model or the make model year in order Toyota Camry 2020 then access the make easy my underscore car dot make then access the model my underscore dot model my underscore dot year will access the year and so on okay and if I run the code it will give me the make model and year Toyota Camry 2020 example number three class and this case person all of them the same concept class name of the class def in itself self dot self dot then you create a class you create instance you create an instance okay all are the same concepts def underscore underscore in it underscore underscore this is the method in it method self name and age for the person self dot name equals name self dot age equals age these attributes to store the name and age of the person then to create an instance of the person we create it called person one person one equals person and inside I need to give the attributes John do the name and the age is 30 now to access the name attribute person one dot name to access the age attribute person one dot age perfect in this example we define a class called person which has two attributes name and age again we repeat the same just for us to digest it okay name and age the init method is a special method that is called when a new object is created from the class so whenever we created here an object person one it, the init method will be called that's why we need to enter these attributes name and age it's used to initialize the attributes of the object name and age we create an instance of the person class called person okay <coughs> and set it set its name to John Doe and its age to 30 we can access the attributes of the object using the dot notation person one dot name okay I hope it's clear and you can create whatever you want the same way for example if I want more here let's say I have let's say let's take the first example if I copy this and let's say I want to add more attributes name age and what else I can for let's say breed okay then here I need to define self dot breed equals what equals the breed okay then here see here what happens let me remove these first of all if I run the code see what will happen there will be an error why why the error because inside the init I have three attributes here I'm only passing two so Python says you need to give me three not only two so I need to pass one more so I passed the name Fido I passed the age three then it's asking me for a breed and what a breed I can enter for example lap and here lap for example now if I run the code everything is okay no problems now you can say dog one dot and see the options you will have breed name age if I need breed run the code perfect that's it okay so play with it spend your time try to create the class from zero go to this code here remove the code just see or start from this one the dog remove the code just keep the comments then try to create it yourself okay it will help you a lot perfect i will see you in the next videos where we are going to add methods we have now so far only one method which is the init let's see if we want to add more methods and what advantage it will give us thank you very much and i will see you in the next video welcome everyone let's continue with our studies of the object oriented programming and this time let's talk more about the methods in oops okay so previously we saw this example class dog define the init method then it has one attribute name self dot name equals name everything is standard my dog then this is the instance equals dog and I give I pass the name Fido and the output here will be Fido right my dog dot name when I call it Fido now 
what I can do, I can add more methods. I have one method here in it, but I can add more methods also. Let's say, for example, I want to add the method bark. So I will define it. So this is everything here is the same class dog in it. Self dot name equals name. Then bark and it has the self always as in each as the first attribute or parameter. Then what it will do, it will just print woof woof. Okay. Then I have the instance my underscore dog equals dog from the class. And the name is Fido because I need one attribute, Fido. Then if I call it my dog dot park, it will give me the woof woof twice because I put it twice. That's it. Woof woof, perfect. And the methods always need parentheses. What do I mean here? If I say my underscore dog, then dot, I have two th options, bark and name, right? Because I have attribute or parameter name. And here I have the bark as a method. So I have both options to select. If I say the name, I don't need parentheses. So run the code, it will give you Fido. For bark, you need parentheses. You need parentheses. Okay. Let's see another example. I have a class, I name it square. Then init method, it has one attribute, one parameter side. Then what it what does it what does it do? We'll see it after. So self.side equals side. Then I have another method area and it has the self as the first always first parameter then what will happen it will retain the self dot side times self dot side it will take the side and multiply it by itself and remember you need to add self dot side okay not side alone self dot side times self dot side because the area of a square is the side by itself now if you want to call it simply you need to define an instance, add it here, square, sqr equals square, and you need to pass a number, 9, for example. Okay, let me just do it from the beginning. So sqr equals, and we have square, and then once you put this one, Python says, okay, you need to pass me the side. The side, how much? I would say 9, for example, and if I run it, let me just remove this one first. It will give you everything okay no problems now if you want to call it what you would say is sqr dot and you want the area or the side i want the area for example then you need parentheses and if you run it it will take the nine and what it will do with it will multiply it by itself nine times nine 81 so basic similar to what we studied before here only we are introducing more methods you can add in as many methods as you would like for example we can define define another let's say um, let's say para not parameter um let's say for example an equation i would operation 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 and the operation it will have self as usual then colon enter and what will happen here it will return it will return, let's say, self dot side times three, for example, just a random one. Then here, run the code, make sure everything is okay, perfect. And then if I I introduce this one, I remove the sqr, and now I say sqr dot, and see the options I have. I have the area, operation, and side. If I see the operation, I need parentheses and go ahead nine times three that's 27 go ahead play with it and add one method for example let's say um the the another operation let's say operation two and that will take the side and multiply it by itself three times it means nothing in mathematics just for the sake of practicing the python code okay another example let's say class circle i call it and then i have pi this is uh, defined above all the methods so this is a global let's say or this is class a class object here it's on the top so it will be fixed for all the methods it will be the same then i define the init self and radius it has one parameter which is the radius self dot radius equals radius and then another method circumference and it has self as usual and the circumference of a circle we know it is 2 times pi times the radius times r which is the radius 2 by r now i created one instance my circle equals circle and i passed 5 5 as what what is 5 here is the radius right 5 is the radius 
sorry this is by mistake here and then my circle dot circumference if i will call it just run the code what do you think two times by times five so 10 times pi which is 31.4 should be 31.4 okay in this example we have a circle class with one attribute radius yes the circ the class also has one method circumference yes the circumference this is built in method in it yes we can consider it also the circumference method calculates the circumference of the circle using the formula 2 pi times the radius it's better maybe here just to times just to make it clear 2 pi and radius an object of the circle class is created with the radius 5 okay then the circumference method is called how do we call it my circle dot circumference the circum the circumference of the circle is returned 31.4 okay what about if i want to find the area okay let's do this one together i want to find the area of this circle how can we find it define area self correct colon it's becoming like more more um, by default it's in your head def the name of the method self colon then down what do you want it to do that's return right return return what what is the area now you want it to return the area of the circle what's the area of the circle pi r square pi times the the radius squared so that i would say circle dot pi correct so this is pi times the radius which is self dot radius times again self dot radius okay so this is my equations the pi radius squared or by itself and here if you are wondering why i put circle dot pi from where i got this is the same if you say if you say um the self okay so that's why but because this is the class object here it's on the top it's better to use the the class name itself okay whenever it's on the top just use the class name it's the same result if you use self dot no difference but it's better here because i defined it on top because it's a constant pi is a constant so we leave it as it is it will never change so just use the class name and this is common in practice now if i want to call it what i would say my underscore circle correct then dot what do i have do you want to retain the radius no do you want pi no area circumference yes i want the area and then do i need parentheses yes because it is a method then run the code and the answer will be 70 it so if you do this one is the same okay so you can define more define more if you want and in this case let's find for example operation define a method called operation if you want to practice and the operation will give you the area of the area of uh, the circle divided by the circumference the area divided by the circumference okay let's move to the next one and I have a class circle also it has in it and the radius circumference and area so it's the same this is what we did here okay this is what we did here so perfect these are methods this is how you add a method in the object oriented programming very helpful you are using and just pay attention to this one here I have pi I identified it as a constant on top of the method so this is class object parameter okay it's a number it's general it will never change because i identified it as a constant unless i change it from here okay perfect go ahead practice play with it and i will see you in the next video with more examples thank you very much hello everyone and welcome again to the object oriented programming in this video we are going to learn about inheritance inheritance and object oriented programming so let's introduce it first then see two examples to make the idea clear so inheritance by the name by the by the way the name is like inheritance you need to inherit something from something else and usually or normally you will inherit from the smaller to the bigger right so here we are going to see inheritance is a mechanism an object oriented programming that allows a new class 
okay and we call subclass or derived class to be based on an existing class the super class or the base class the don't worry about the names we'll see them now in examples the subclass inherits the attributes and behaviors of the super class and can also have its own attributes and behaviors straightforward here is a simple example of inheritance in python so i have a class called animals and this is a super class or the basic class because it's the let's say the father the parent class is the on the top then i it has in it method with self and it will just simply print i am an animal or i'm animal I'm an animal better then another method makes sound and self print some generic animal sound okay this is basic this is my base class or super class then i defined another class below it and i called it dog and see what's the difference here here we used to have the class animals and then brackets or parentheses empty nothing inside now if you want a subclass you want to tell python okay this is a subclass of the animals class and you need to pass animals inside the name of the super class need to be passed inside the subclass this is a subclass or derived class then you have the init method with self and here another difference you need to add init method here dot see super dot what is the super the super is a function to tell python that you need to take the parameters the attributes from the super class from here also this super can be animals can be animals like here i can tell python this is animals dot in it okay i can say that i can do animals but the best practice is to keep it as super as super why is that because in the future if you change the super class name animals then you need to change all the names in any subclasses of of the animals class okay and that might is not a good practice so here super خلص. you have it only one time everything is okay and then dot the init method then print what we'll do simply i am a dog print i am a dog for example then we created the instance dog with a small d lowercase equals the dog the big one okay this is and see here we have no methods inside okay but yet i'm able to call the make sound the make sound is a method under where it's under the super class the animals class the animals class it's not under the dog class it's not here however i'm still able to call it because i am inheriting all the methods the attributes from the super class you see the difference if i run the code everything is perfect it will says i'm animal i'm a dog and there is some generic animal sound so it it was executed even it's not part directly it's not under directly the subclass the doggy class because it inherited how it inherited by passing animals in the class and by writing this line of code super dot in it okay let's see another example so the main difference is you pass the animal the super class name in the subclass and you write super dot in it below it second example i have another class person this is super class then init method it has one attribute or one parameter name self dot name equals name then i have display underscore this is the method and what it will do it will display the name and it will type this is a person with the name okay and make sure you write self dot name not only name then i have a subclass called student and because it's a subclass of the super class person i need to pass the name person here and then define the init method and it has two attributes or two parameters name and id then i have the super dot init just to tell python yes this is a subclass then i have self dot id equals id okay which will just define the id i didn't define i didn't say self dot name equals name c important because already it's here defined in the super class so no need to do it again i can override it if i want but i don't want now it's just the same then i'll say s this is an instance of the student class and i pass two how many parameters i need here i need name and id alice and one two three then self dot display name where is this display name method is it under the student 
class? No, it's under the super class display.name, right? However, I am still able to call it because I am inheriting everything from the super class. So if I run the code, should be okay. This is a person, Alice. And see the output is this is a person colon Alice, the name, okay? Okay, see the explanation also here, just what we said. The student class doesn't have the display name. Student class doesn't have the display name method, but it will inherit the display underscore name method from the person class, from the person class, the super class, and it can use it directly after the student class init method is called. So after we call the init method, we can use it. You can see that when we create an instance of the student class and call the display underscore name method on it, it will print this is a person. So what does it mean? When we call the display, this when we call this method, it will print this, the execute whatever under it, right? Okay, perfect. This is the inheritance. This is inheritance. It's very helpful because it makes your code more readable and also shorter, right? You don't need to write again here. You didn't need to define display underscore name again because you can inherit whatever is in the super class. Okay, perfect. This is inheritance. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video. Hello, everyone. Let's go ahead and study a new thing in object oriented programming, and this is special methods. We learned about methods, the init method, and we learned how to define methods like bark method in the dog uh, class example and circumference and area methods in the circle class. Now let's see three special methods and called the under methods because I will explain to you why in a minute. Let's see the explanation then we see examples as usual. So in Python special methods are methods that have double underscores, double underscores and this is where the name comes from D under double underscores at the beginning and end of their names like the init method also no known as the under okay we said this these methods are used to define the behavior of certain operations on an object such such as addition or indexing two of the most commonly used special methods are the string str and the length methods and see both of them has double underscore before and after the str method is a special method that is used to define the string representation of an object. When you print an object, the str method is called to retain a string representation of the object. I will show you what does it mean. If you don't define a str method in your class, Python will use the default one, which will give you the memory address of the object, the mem memory address. Okay, let's see example before we move to the length. So I have a class, let's call it my class. It has init method with one parameter name, self.name equals name. Then I, here the object is my class and John, right? This is the name. Now, if I say, let me remove the len as a comment. Now, if I say print object here, it will give you the parameter. See here, it'll give you the memory address of the object. This is the memory address of the object. My object is the obg, which is my class, okay? the if i print it it will give me the memory this is the memory address now if i want to print uh, to print it to have the output i need to define a str method i need to use the str method so how to do that the same way very simple straightforward diff underscore underscore str underscore underscore then self as usual colon then return self dot name this is what you want it you want it to return the name so if i run the code now it will give you John Doe. Okay, this is the name. For example, we entered here. Okay, it will give you the name. Compared to the previous one, because I didn't define the str, it will give you just the memory location. Okay, where you stored it. This is for the str. We'll see more examples. Then we, if we talk about the len method, it's a special method that is used to define the length of an object. We saw it before, but we saw it for a string or or list or something, right? 
similar or tuple for example but now we want to see it for objects inside the classes it's used when you call the len function on an object on an object if you don't define a len method there will be an error python will raise a type error when you call the len function on an object of that class let's see what does it mean now let me uncomment this and see what will happen here I call the len object the length I want the length of John Doe right it will give you type error type error which says object of type my class has no length has no length so I need to define using a special I need to call special method define underscore underscore len underscore underscore self as usual colon retain the length you need to retain the length of self dot name right and then the object this is my instance i will call the len obj and it will you it's eight because one two three four space five six seven eight it has eight characters okay including the space so this is the length method so this is important to note and just remember if you call the if you print the object without defining the str method then it will not give you an error it will just give you the memory where you stored it and for the len method it will give you a type error another example i have a class my list i have the init method and inside it there are items one parameter items then save dot items equals items then define the str define the len two special methods and then i'll say my list equals my list from my list here i defined one object i say one two three four five then if i print my list it should print one two three four five and then the length is five because one two three four five right if i comment len now what will happen i will have type error yes because the length and you have the right the red line Control z and then run it again everything is okay if i comment the str what will happen it will give you the memory yeah where it is sitting now so this is important this is important to know and the last thing is the delete method or del method is a special method in python that is called when an object is about to be destroyed destroyed or deleted it's also known as the destructure method is defined using the double underscore as uh, as we said then del and this method is used to release any resources that the object may be holding for example you defined the object let's say here my list if you want to destroy it you want to release it then you can use this method let's see example so class my resource then i have the init with the name parameter self dot name equals name then what will what will happen is to print the name and resource created it will say this resource is created then res1 this is an instance and if i run the code everything is okay file resource created file resource created because i passed file right i passed file now if i uncomment the delete the delete method how to define it how to call it the same like the str and the len just dev underscore underscore del underscore underscore self colon then print and whatever you want inside right we are using the f format self dot name not name alone self dot name resource deleted whatever you want to say and then you just define an object res1 it's part of the class my resource here and how many parameters i need i need one which is the name and i call the name is file and then if i want to delete it i remove this and run the code and it gives, tells you the resource is created but then the file resource deleted okay deleted because once you call the dal you simply are deleting the resource and the message i told python okay once you delete the resource just to print a message that the resource is deleted okay so these are three simple special methods there are many other methods you can look at the documentation but these are the for this stage the most commonly used okay perfect that's it about the special methods thank you and i will see you in the next video hello everyone okay it's time for a nice homework quick one 
So we have one, two, three, four, five questions. We have five questions, and then this video will go over them, and in the next video, inshallah, we are going to see the solutions. So the first question is create a class, they are connected. Create a class called person that has two attributes, name and age. Also add a method called display underscore info that prints out the name and age of the person, straightforward. And always step by step, go word by word, create a class, then immediately go and say class, right? And then the name, what's the name of the class? Person and so on, you know the rest. But my point is, take it word to word and try to understand. Read the whole question first, understand the problem, then go and create, start creating your code. Second question, create a class called student that inherits from the person class, from the first class, add an attribute called student underscore ID and a method called display underscore student underscore info that prints out the student's name, age, and student ID. Third question, create a class called teacher that also inherits from the person class, from the first class. So the first class person is a super class and the student and teacher are subclasses. So create a class called teacher that also inherits from the person class, add an attribute called teacher underscore ID and a method called display underscore teacher underscore info that prints out the teacher's name age and teacher id fourth question create an instance of the student class the second class this one and an instance of the teacher class and call the display and call the display underscore info mm -hmm. display student display underscore student info and display teacher underscore info okay so what you need to do create an instance of the student class and the teacher class and call the display underscore info display underscore student underscore info and display underscore teacher underscore info all these methods to make sure they work correctly create and the last one create a class called course that has two attributes name and code also add a method called display underscore course underscore info that prints out the name and code of the course okay so it's about inheritance about creating classes methods kind of mix of what we studied so far okay perfect i'll see you in the next video with the solutions but please try to solve it yourself make as many mistakes as you want this is not the time to become to to write a full program or codes and uh, without errors this is the time you will never yeah, I mean, it's so difficult and maybe even when you are advanced programming you will still have errors you will still have errors so the best way is just go ahead and try just dive just put yourself in try to solve it make as many mistakes and learn from them that will help you a lot in the future thank you i'll see you in the next video with the solutions hello again okay i hope you had good time solving the homework and doing it and don't worry regardless what or how easy was it for you or how difficult was it for you don't worry this is the best time to practice and learn okay let's go ahead and see the solutions the first one let me make it a little bit bigger not that much okay so create a class called person called person sorry that has two attributes name and age also add a method called display underscore info that prints out the name and age of the person basic class so create a class called person class person two dots two uh, sorry one column and if you want parentheses that's okay then i know for person for a class i need in it so in itself how many attributes two attributes what what are they name and age so i always start with self then name and age here i have in this case then self dot name self dot age self dot name equals name self dot age equals age then also add a method called display info so def display underscore info and always it takes self that prints what does it do this method it prints out the name and age simple print the name and age you can say use the format the f format or or the dot form you can use either either the f format or the dot format now we are using the f format the f string so here i have the f if you are not sure about this one go back to the first section i believe where we explain the print formatting look at that lecture to give you more details so i have the f 
then a string name and this is just to print name then i will i would like to pass by the self dot name not name alone self dot name then comma age self dot age and i close my quotations and then i just close the parentheses and then if i want to call it i created instance person one equals person this class and inside i need two attributes two parameters name and age john and 30 then i will call it by saying dot display underscore info if i run the code everything is perfect name john age 30. okay perfect next one create a class called student is the same yes class so class student that inherits from the person class immediately it inherits from the person class then i need here in the person class it's super class we kept it empty here but for the student it is a subclass so it need to inherit from the person so i will write person between the parentheses then define the init method how many parameters add attributes called student id and a method called from the person add an attribute called student underscore id student underscore id and a method called display under student underscore student underscore info this is the method okay that prints out the student's name age and student id okay perfect here just add an attribute called student underscore id you might be asking okay where is it this is it uh, self dot student underscore id equals student underscore id what attributes this class student has it has the name age and student underscore id can i remove the age and name yes because they are already in the super class i don't have to add them i don't have to add them however they are there it's okay if you want to keep them it's not yani this is good also to know that we don't because we might override if we want to override the super class we can we can use them here as well so that's totally fine that's totally fine However, you don't need them for this example so far because they are in the super class. In the super class. Now, then create a method display underscore the student underscore info. This is it. And it does print the name and the age and the ID. Then I created an instance, a student one. Always create an instance object if you want to pass the parameters and type it out or print it out student it takes from the super from the class student the name and the what is this this is the student the student id right the name age and student id then i have the student one dot display underscore student underscore info okay and this is the method and if i run this everything is perfect everything is perfect yes now of course i can this is simple straightforward example but i can also yani use things are not available here let's say for example you want the student yani the method display underscore student underscore info is available under the student you might be asking so why i'm using the inheritance in another situation you can say student one dot something is not available in the class in the subclass student i can say that display underscore info display underscore info this method is not under the student class right display under let me make sure yes it's not there display underscore info and if i call this one it should be okay also yes it gives you mary age 20 name mary age 20 makes sense you see what i did here at the last point i just want to this demonstrate for you where is the advantage or the benefit of the inheritance because i can inherit from the super class this part this method display underscore info is not part of the student class so i add it i called it i called it by simply dot display underscore info okay even though it's not under the subclass but i can call it because i am inheriting i added the name of the super class person and i added the super dot init method okay perfect then similar to the student i will add a teacher it says create a class called teacher this is class teacher also inherits from the person so i add person and you will see the line super dot init here and then add an attribute called teacher id teacher underscore id where is it it's here 
attribute self the teacher underscore id and i have it also here teacher underscore id in the init then add a method called display underscore teacher underscore info which is this one that prints out the teacher name age and teacher id name age and id the similar very similar example very similar example to the student but this is for a teacher again you can say teacher one dot dot what i need to take from the inheritance which is display info is not here but i still can call it because i'm inheriting from the person i call it everything okay it gives you only the name and age without the id okay display info perfect now we can go to the next one create an instance of the student class and an instance of the teacher class and call the display underscore info okay this is what we did just now above right display student underscore info and display underscore teacher info so we are calling all the methods the display underscore student underscore info these are in the student class and the display teacher info this is in the teacher class however the display info is in the super class the person class okay just to make sure he's saying here to make sure they work correctly the inheritance what you did so this is shows us where is the inheritance playing role okay see because i'm calling it this is from the super class coming this is coming from the subclass super class subclass okay this is the why the inheritance was there okay because i was wondering why the inheritance we have it so now in this question we have it okay if you were wondering and the last one is create a class called course that has two attributes name and code also add a method called display underscore course underscore info that prints out the name and code of the course so the solution simple class called course two attributes name and code always start with self and we have the init method then self dot name equals name self dot code equals code if you did all the examples all the practice practice before with us in the videos this become more like second nature self dot name equals name self dot code equals code then another method what is the method here display course info and it takes self as usual then print print what the name and code of the course name if format name if string name self dot name don't make it only name and code self dot code okay and then the code is running everything is perfect they didn't ask me to call anything but if i want to call i will simply assign a course this is an object instance i said course equals course small uh, lowercase uppercase and i will pass what you need to pass two things the name and the code introduction to oop object oriented programming and the code of the course csc101 for example any anything you would like then i will call it by the method display course info run the code everything is perfect and the output is name introduction to oop which is taking from here okay and the code is there this is not inheriting everything not inheriting any think for now okay perfect this is a quick overview of the solution make sure to make it with your hands if you didn't do it yet do it now i would love from you i would like from you really to practice because this python or any programming language you need to practice you need to do it yourself okay thank you very much and i'll see you in the next lecture